All right, and we'll just give it a second. I, I, we're seeing that we have some of our partners down at the state. Hopefully you can hear us. Uh, good evening, how are you doing today? Welcome. It's good to see and hear you, Bruce. Nice to see you guys. We're, we're knocking on wood that nothing happens technology-wise, so we're not to count our chickens just yet. Welcome, Mr. John Burnick. Hi, good to be here. So we just want to make sure as we get, we're about ready to get into the Department of Transportation train presentation. Um, welcome. <laughs> we just want to apologize for what happened a couple weeks ago. The technology, I mean, it is not infallible, as we all know. And um, but we also just want to thank you to all your team who are coming back. You know that, yeah, you, you hung in there a couple weeks ago when we couldn't fix it. We appreciate you coming back. Your presentation, I think, is really going to be. Uh, yeah, I think our, our town is really going to appreciate the detail and what you put together. And um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to our town manager, and then we'll welcome our members from DOT. Again, um, thank you very much for coming tonight. I mean, I know it was short notice, but we appreciate your flexibility. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I uh, echo that. We are quite appreciative, not only that you came last time and waited for about uh, half an hour, 45 minutes, but you came back again tonight to give it the old college try. So we thank Paul Russell because our IT director, I told him if it didn't work, then he should have a bag packed for the morning. So <laughs> I'm happy to say that Paul will be staying with us. Um, I'm happy to welcome Bruce Olmsted. He is the chief engineer on this rail project. Mr. John Burnick, he is the uh, uh, bureau chief, for a better term, of rail for the state of Connecticut, uh, top administrator who's been working with us since the beginning over three years ago. I'm not going to take a lot of time. I'm just going to say we've come a long way, right, John? Um, we yep. went down to DOT with our contingent and representatives Arnone and representative uh, Carol Hall and, and John Kissel, and we broached this subject about um, changing the uh, proposed uh, station that was really in the future and not really uh, going to be done anytime soon to a platform that we thought we could use, that it would be uh, sufficient to address our needs to have a stop for the community, some cost savings, but that wasn't the biggest driver. That's a benefit of it. And DOT, to their credit, and Commissioner Giotti, they... Um, they considered it, they looked at it, and with Bruce at the helm, uh, they redesigned it. And they had input from us. Uh, we gave that presentation publicly a short while ago, and these folks are here to give you their final design and engineering in a time frame, and we can't thank them enough. We really look forward to working with them on this very exciting project. As we've said, it's great for Enfield. It's great for the Hartford Rail. We think it's gonna be great for the Northeast uh, Corridor uh, Rail with Amtrak and, and for the state of Connecticut up and down the East Coast. So we're very excited to be part of this project. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Olmstead. Thank you very much. Paul, can you put up the slides or how do you want to run this? I can put them up for you. That would be appreciative. Okay. Um, so as was described to you guys, we initially were going to have a two-sided platform in Enfield and double tracks. When the request came in, we actually did a lot of, um, we said, is it possible to build a single-sided platform and accommodate the trains that we want to accommodate for the next vision cycle? So we went to rail operations, and, and of which John Burnick is part of the unit, and we asked them for scenario inputs as to how many trains a day can we pass through this area and still get a robust service and a really good way of doing it. So they came back with essentially all of the trains that they are currently ordering and said, well, if we can get these trains through, that's probably the best we're gonna be able to do on the next cycle. So it would be appreciative if this would work. We sent it off, we had it tested, and, and suddenly we found we could do a single track through this area and get all the trains through that they currently are. So it's it's a win-win for the town. And then the town handed us literally a back of an um, sketch as to what they thought the station could look like. We appreciated the sketch because it gave us a starting point. We took that starting point and what you're seeing tonight is kind of how that starting point evolved into a station. I need to remind everybody, this is a concept. 
When the engineers get a hold of these things, they have to make changes. They make changes for a multiple of reasons um, between codes and between how the railroad operates and how you get a fire truck into point A to point B. So things are going to change. But at least tonight you get some idea of the general overall concept of how the station will look and how the station will perform as a single-sided platform. Hey, Bruce, so the uh, hatched area in red up at the top of the, of the page um, is, the, is the easterly platform. So it will be on the east side of track one. We'll be putting in a approximate 200 foot long platform. Now it's, it's gonna be longer. How much, we're not exactly sure. The real issue comes down to you can't have a platform in a curve. And if you look at the tracks, as you go further north, they curve. So we can't have a platform there because if you can imagine, one door is gonna sit right up against the platform and the other one's gonna be feet away and someone's gonna fall through between the platform and the next car door. So we're looking at a platform that can accommodate four trains. So if you consider a northbound train, one headed to Springfield, comes into the station, they're gonna stop. And the first car, the last door on the first car, will open, the next two doors will open on the next car, the same thing with the third car, and on the fourth car, only the front door will open. But at the same time, you're now having the ability to access the platform from four different cars, which allows you to board in and off very, very quickly. In addition to that, the platform will be raised so that the boarding passengers will be literally walking out at the same elevation as the platform. There's no stairs to navigate. There's a little bit of a difference between the, the bed of the train and the actual platform, but it's a simple, easy step out, step across, and you can now get in and out of the trains rather quickly. If you stay on that platform, you'll see there's two points where the orange lines come in, and those are the access points. So we'll have a point that you can access to the north and a point to the south, so that again, you can keep the flow of the, of the public going in and out. From there, we're putting the, the Magenta building is really for utilities. We The platforms have heated capacity in them to allow snow to melt, so you don't have to have someone wake up at two in the morning and go out and try to put salt down and try to keep the platforms clear. You press a button, the, the platforms instantaneously heat up, and then over time they continue to, to melt away whatever snow occurs during most reasonable storms. Get a blizzard, I can't guarantee anything, but most storms, there'll be no ice, no snow, nothing but a little bit of steam coming off the platforms for people to deal with. That utility building in Magenta we'll talk about in a few minutes but it's just generally a utility building where people can congregate next to get their tickets out of automatic vending machines and stay a little bit out from the weather when they're waiting for the trains to curve. If you look at Commerce Street, which is just next to that utility building, we're really allowed two lanes of traffic and the gray area to the south is an area for a bus to come into. And to the north, what happens is that bus goes down Commerce Street, gets into the roundabout, turns around, and then can come and have the door on the correct side when it drops passengers off at the station. The areas in black and gray are for defined parking areas. We now have found that it's best to meter the parking. We have a very, very small charge that's done there, and that's pretty much to allow you to clean up the places during snow events and try to pay a little bit for that. The, the rate that they currently charge, I think, is about $2 a day. It's just really reasonable, and it gives you a place that they can work with and, and be able to have a nice area whenever the, the weather is not perfect. There are three different locations for parking here. They're all very close to the station, and the combination of the three will be somewhere near 100 spaces. I'm not guaranteeing you anything. We need to work with Bigelow Commons. 
so that we make sure that all of their needs are addressed. We need to work with the town because some of the property is theirs. And we need to work with Amtrak because some of the property is theirs to make sure that we can come up with a robust number of parking spots to work through. From here, if anyone has any questions whatsoever on the station itself, we ask that you hold the comments till the end. We'll come back to this and you can ask anything you want within reason. And we're gonna go on to now the utility building, which is slide two. So thank you. So essentially you can see there's, there's no public access door to this building. The building literally holds utilities. It holds power, it holds a little bit of water in it, it holds anything that is needed to run the station, but it does not accommodate people. The square, or I should say the tall rectangular units that the people are standing in front of would be ticket vending machines, whether the vending machines for the Hartford line, or you can probably you can also get tickets for Metro North from here, and the smaller ones are for the bus lines. So you can get all of your vending done at one time and be able to get all of your connections and take this train ride to wherever you need to go to make sure it works. From here, we're gonna transfer you on to what you could find at the station itself. If you go to slide three. From here, you can see the snow melt in operation. So I'm gonna start you in the upper left-hand corner and then walk you through the different elements that you'll find at a train station. So in the, in the very first one, you will see that it's the middle of a snowstorm and the, tr and the platform is pretty much bare. Now this is a concrete platform. The platforms we'll be using here are fiber reinforced polymers, which means they're plastic, but they're not, very slippery or any of that stuff. They are designed just to melt. The next item that you'll see on there is we have some accommodations. There is seating, there is trash removal. There will be full ADA compatible stairs where necessary or ramps also. The next item was to show you the board that is up top. Now we are going to have live information for you on trains. So the first one is the board up top on the upper right hand corner. That board will tell you connecting train service. If you also look there, you'll see there's speakers out there. So anytime you have a board to look at, there's also audio given at the same time. As you continue down, you'll see that the next one is a utilitarian looking box with a blue shield in it. That blue shield is a blue light. At all stations, we'll have a blue light communications. If there's any problems, you press the button. It immediately goes to either Amtrak police or the local police department. That will be determined during the design. And you'll be able to instantaneously talk to somebody and resolve whatever issues you have. Just below that is what we call wayfinding or signage to tell you how to get to wherever you need to go, whether it be to the your parking, to your bus that you're going to get to, or it or to a handicap ramp. Continuing along to the on the bottom row, you can see that the platforms are lit. They have information on the town itself that they'll be in. The one you see there is the one we have in Wallingford. There'll be a very similar one here for information on the town of Enfield. The next design element that you'll see is what we call the PID system. So that's the yellow, light, yellow letters that are on the sign that tells you when is the next train coming. So it kind of gives you a warning as to when the train comes because modern tracks are not well are not are welded. So you don't have the clickety clack of the old trains. The diesel engines are very quiet when they're at a distance away, so you never hear them coming in. So they kind of want to warn you, hey, there's a train coming. And the final element is that we do take aesthetics into some of the consideration, and we try within the budget to keep the place aesthetically pleasing. 
And that one you'll see on the very last element is the canopies. Part of the station platform will have canopies to protect you from the weather. So the next slide, slide four, is how these projects evolve. So on slide four, you'll see there's a red box. That red box is the current bridge that carries Amtrak over Main Street. That bridge has a very low clearance. That bridge was rebuilt in the 90s. It's getting old. It needs a new superstructure. In addition to that, when you build a new platform, which is the, the herringbone pattern that you can see in red just next to that bridge, you want to be able to have that platform in operation for years and years and years before you have to work on the bridge. So one element that we're doing here is we're replacing this bridge superstructure when we build the platform. So therefore, the two will coincide with each other. The budget is limited. We are not looking to widen the road. We are looking to get a little bit more clearance under the road. We're going to, our objective is to get as high as 13.6. It is now 12.5, I believe, posted for. Um, it may be doable. We may have to be a little bit less, but we will get some additional clearance. This will be good for fire engines, et cetera. The widths under the bridge will remain, though, at the widths they are today, which is about 28 feet, I believe, is the exact number. So you have a five-foot sidewalk and two 12, 11 to 12-foot 12 lanes that run under it, which is plenty adequate for the amount of traffic that this, thing, this road sees. And then if you continue on to the last slide, this is our current schedule. Schedules change based upon hiccups that come up during design, but currently we're looking to try to get the thing into construction um, in October of 2022, and an estimate that this will take about a year to build. All right, so if you don't mind going back to slide one, we'll take any questions that are out there. And I would like to introduce you on my team now. So me tonight is Julianne Chapman. She is our project engineer. And she will be running point with the town for most of this project. And she'll be the eyes and the ears for you guys. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. The other one that's here tonight is John Burnick. John Burnick is an assistant rail administrator. He deals with rail design and also has an ear to operational side. He's not the lead on the operational side, but he knows a lot about operations. So we brought him here tonight so that if you have questions on that, we can answer them. Without further ado, please ask us any, most anything you want. We'll try to get you an answer. Hey, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, and just Bruce, thank you very much. Anyone else who came with Bruce, would you, any comments before we open up the question? Mr. Mayor, I just want to, I don't know if Paul, we invited um, both our state reps, Carol Hall and Tom Arnone on as well in case. Uh, if they were on, I'd just identify them so they'd be able to ask questions in addition to the council. We did send them a link, okay. I hope they're on, if they wanted to be. So Paul, before we get to the state reps, just want to make sure, any from, anyone from Bruce's team, would before we open up the questions, any comments or or points you'd like to make just want to make sure we first of all we appreciate you all being here just want to make sure you have a chance to uh speak anything that you would like to you know the public to know i think john hey. burnick has something to add go ahead john yeah yeah i just wanted to uh kind of frame some of uh, uh bruce's uh bruce's very excellent uh presentation um <clears throat> as bruce noted the slide that's up now is uh you know just at the concept stage uh we did have um, a, a phone call last week with uh, some representatives from Bigelow Commons. They, they may be uh, attending uh, either in person or virtually tonight. Um, uh, and, you know, they were very interested in rights away impacts. You know, this is not, we're really not quite at that stage yet. Um, but, uh, you know, this kind of gives you an idea roughly of the footprint. And so now as, as Bruce uh, uh, puts the, and the Baker design team brings the, the the station design forward, you know, that's when we start to get into stakeholder outreach, you know, identifying the impacts, looking at how to mitigate those impacts, uh, you know, both from the, uh, as Bruce mentioned, from the perspective of the town and, and the 
perspective of, of Bigelow Commons. And of course, you know, tweaks to, to absolutely minimize uh, those impacts. And so a little bit of patience, um, but um, we are aware that, you know, that we are, that there, there, will, there will be some rights of way action here. Um, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're sensitive to that. Uh, on the issue of the schedule, um, you know, that is somewhat funding dependent. There is some funds programmed. If, if, you know, if you're paying attention to the capital program that got published, there is some funding that we do have programmed for the station. Some of it is in the over-programmed category. Um, however, there's a great many opportunities, you know, that may present themselves here, particularly with federal funding, um, you know, the possibility of, of additional state bonding, um, you know, all these things are, are are being debated now, both in, in Hartford and in Washington. Um, but certainly we have the design funded, um, you know, and we're, we're feeling pretty optimistic, you know, that we can move smoothly into construction, but it's that is not a done deal. And so, you know, I, you know, I encourage you to continue to be active, you know, uh, in, 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 you know, your in the quest for funding, you know, both on the state level and on the uh, on the national level. Um, and finally, just a tip of the hat to the town. Um, you know, the you know, as as you mentioned in the beginning, that you know, this is about being in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, we had you know, we'd always had a, a concept for an Enfield station. Um, it was in the original NEPA. The, the, the town, of course, was was wanted to move quickly. They were willing in to 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 bring uh, resources to the table, which was very welcome. And um, and then you know, sort of just the synergy that happened when Bruce's team looked at the reconfiguration of the track. Um, all of a sudden, you know, things started to fall in place, but they fell into place because people were ready and people were queuing up ideas and queuing up designs. Um, and, and we were able to move very quickly when you think about it from probably last fall till now, you know, this whole thing sort of became, came together and, and became possible. So, um, you know, with that, um, um, we're happy to take questions. Appreciate it. So, so I, is there any, is there, are either the state reps on before we open up to the council? I don't. A representative Hall or Representative Arnone, are they either one on? I don't see any. Uh, okay. Mike. Okay. No worries. If they they can join, we'll certainly take questions. Any questions from the town council, Councillor Sakala? Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. We appreciate you guys coming back for a second time. Um, so we do have people who are going to be watching this online and watching it in the next couple of days and weeks. Hopefully, can we'll have it, a link to it on our website. So I guess I do have a couple of questions that I know that we're going to get. Um, who is going to be responsible for the maintenance, the upkeep? Is that going to be the town or the state? The um, We have the other uh, stations on the line or are, are included in the contract with the joint venture that operates the line. Um, and so they, we, you know, part of that joint venture includes um, station operations and maintenance and so uh we, you know we're, we're foreseeing that 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 will continue as we add stations to the line uh they'll be added to that contract so it'll be part of the operations uh the state operations okay so would that contract be something that would cost the town money to i guess i'm not understanding your answer no we don't charge the town okay all right um, and I guess my other question and comment is, um, is there going to be any possible way to get any sort of facilities there? Like, like bathrooms. What? Oh, um, you know, we, we, we did not, we did not add bathrooms to the, to the, um, to the original station bills at any of the stations. Um, the, the stations are really designed um, to be boarding platforms. People show up uh, just as the train is, is boarding generally. It's a commuter type operation. Um, and you don't, it's not like a transfer station. And, and from, from a DOT wide perspective, that's pretty consistent uh, across 
the territory. There's some legacy stations uh, along the main line that, that still have restrooms, but they're not operated 24 seven. Generally, you might have a vendor in there selling coffee or something in the morning. And then by like eight o'clock, they, they, they close the doors. Um, uh, we're adding, uh, you know, we have plans to add high level platforms on the Waterbury branch. Those will include restrooms. None of the other Hartford Line stations with the exception of Hartford itself have restrooms. There are restrooms available on the train uh, and they are accessible, fully accessible restrooms. Um, okay. and, and the new equipment that we're purchasing will also have fully accessible restrooms on them. Um, and so it, it, you know, to have a restroom, you really need a, a, you know, a building that, that has, you know, someone, you know, an attendee, you know, we're, we're looking for, and we're certainly open to, um, opportunities where a local business, you know, on an adjoining property, you know, may want to open up something that includes restrooms. And that's an opportunity for a public private partnership, you know, where you could get those kinds of amenities, you know, without having it being, you know, a, a burden on a, on a, on a public agency and, and also to have a, you know, a, a money-making opportunity for a local business. Okay. So no facilities, no restrooms, but all of the trains that are going to go through this platform, all of them have bathrooms on them. Fully accessible bathroom, okay. yes. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. That's all I had. Thank you, Councillor Muller. Thank you, Bruce and John, and thank you for coming back again. I just, I might be ahead of myself, but will the building have a generator? Yes. So they do come. The building, the building has, has two, two different, different electrical, electrical sources, sources to it. To it. We, we have, have a, a, a UPS, UPS system, system. So that's, that's an, an uninterrupted Power, power supply, supply system, system like the which batteries keeps things like the emergency, emergency lights, lights stay on so, so when, when power, power is lost to the station the emergency lights, lights will stay on the um any that emergency system, system like the blue lights will stay on but the, the rest, rest of the station will go dark, dark. There, there will be a small generator that will then take, take over from that UPS system, system, system to keep those types of elements going. going. We, we never, never intend during a power outage to keep snow melt going. going. It's okay. just too, too much, too big, too, draw, too hard too to draw. You still have emergency, emergency lighting both on the, on the platform and in the parking areas. areas. Perfect. And on the roof, did I see solar? Yes, yes you did. did. So, so the, the intent, intent is, is this is a self-facing building. building. So the, the intent, intent is to try to get photovoltaics to work. Great. Thank you, Bruce. Councillor Schwarz, then Councillor Crisati. Thank you, gentlemen, a great presentation. I just have three quick questions. Number one, um, if there were to be a, a, a criminal act on one of the platforms, is, is that an Amtrak jurisdiction or our local police would handle that? Um, the, well, the, you know, the local police always have jurisdiction. Um, you know, generally, um, you know, they're, they're, they're the closest, um, the, the platforms will have security cameras. Um, we're, we're, we're undertaking a project now where all the security cameras are, are being wired back to central location. However, um, the, they're not monitored. Um, you know, they're there for, you know, to, to, you know, more of a recovery, you know, uh, you know, evidence gathering, um, uh, you know, and a deterrent. Um, but, uh, w you know, we've been getting requests um, for local police, you know, can we get those speeds? You know, because some of the, so I don't know how it is in Enfield, but in some, in some towns they have the ability, like in Meriden, they have the ability to bring the speeds into the car, right into the control cars. Um, you know, we can look at that and we're, we're exploring those kinds of options and, and we will continue to. And we'd be, you know, once again, happy to, to partner um, and so, as Bruce said, the blue light, um, the blue light, uh, you know, can be programmed to ring, you know, basically wherever you want. You know, um, the Amtrak, uh, uh, I think some of the stations do ring to Amtrak, but Amtrak monitors that 24/7, and just like a 911 operator, you know, would bring in whatever local jurisdiction needed to be there. Um, okay. So you're not calling. You know, you're not calling some empty cubicle in Philadelphia. You know, it's it's, it's you know it's a, they they take their security seriously. Um, but you know, in the end, um, you know, 
when it comes to first responders, whoever needs to respond needs to respond, and the local police always have jurisdiction. Okay, thank you. Question number two, who gets the revenue from the parking meters, the town or the state? Well, since I explained before that we're, we're, we're picking up the, the cost of maintaining the, the, the station, I think we're going to take the revenue from the parking meter. Okay, and number three, um, when this is fully operational, if you wanted to go to New York City, you would take the southbound train into New Haven to Grand Central and transfer right into uh, New York, right? Yes, yeah. So they're set up as cross-platform uh, moves. And so um, there's there's two variants of train stations out there. And I'll, and I'll go back to, you know, back in the day when I was sitting over where Bruce sits now. <laughs> I gave this speech many times. Um, it's a hybrid service. It's a combination of what they call a 209 service, which is state-sponsored service that Amtrak runs as Amtrak-branded trains. And there's 212 service, which is commonly referred to as commuter service. We like to say that it's all a hybrid inner city. But those are the CT rail trains, the red, white, and black ones that are operated by our service provider, PASS. Um, the, 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 the total frequency is a combination of all the trains. Now, if you buy a CT rail ticket or an Amtrak ticket, doesn't matter. You can board either train. But the trains are timed specifically so that the Amtrak branded trains are timed to more closely match a cross-platform move onto another Amtrak train in New Haven. The CT Rail trains are timed in the schedule to be more convenient to do a cross-platform move and transfer in New Haven to a Metro North train. Now, having said that, you know, there's a lot of talk about expanded rail options. Hartford Line is right. You know, for, for, for expanded rail, you know, the, the, the situation Bruce, Bruce described with additional trains on the line, um, we're buying equipment that'll handle additional trains. Amtrak is interested in expanding on this route. It's, it's kind of funny. I, I was on a call with them yesterday, and, um, you know, they, their planning people were concerned about the capacity on the line, and I'm like, well, that's, that's refreshing. Um, and so you might be able, you might see in the future more one-seat rides which would be Amtrak branded trains that take you all the way to Penn Station. Um, and so that is, you know, at, you know, for Enfield, which is sort of on the outskirts, maybe a little too far to commute into New York on a commute, but on an occasional trip, an occasional business trip, you know, that's a real, uh, that's a real win, especially when you talk about a mix of services, you know, uh, Grand Central is, is Midtown, um, the you know Penn is on the on the Lower West Side. Um, they're they're somewhat in Manhattan. They're somewhat different markets, um, and so uh, th there's a lot of development on the Lower West Side, and so there's an, an increased interest in getting some trains um, that that occasional business travelers might want to take. Okay, thank you, Chris. Before. Ahead, sir. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to add uh, to that point. We, we anticipate having a very robust police presence there. We have enhanced and we have um, in increased our uh, command center for video, and part of the budget tonight will be expanding that. We fully intend on asking and working with the state and Amtrak to have those cameras live feed to us. Also, I will tell you, it's timing is everything, that the La Mania Center will be decommissioned. It probably will be taken down around the time this station is completed. We have a police substation there. Uh, we are looking in that area to put a police substation so that we can assure our folks and those who come to commute there will never be an untoward event 24 7 at our station in Enfield and that also then offers perhaps a future partnership as um, John's talked about public private for other amenities where there might be some other yeah. facilities we have a lot of area down there on North Main that's ready to be developed but we would like to have a uh, police substation in close proximity so that everyone feels comfortable and we have people there 24 7 365 all year long you know in the end people tell me um you know i'm an engineer but i i i i, I end up hanging out with a lot of developers <laughs> and what they tell me is um your best security is people on the street you know people feet on the pavement that's that's what makes an area secure yep. Yep. very well said councillor Crisati. Yeah, thank you, uh, gentlemen, for your presentation tonight. Uh, I have a 
a couple of questions. They're not, not questions, but um, a couple of statements. First of all, I am glad that you fully explained the use of the utility building, that there's not going to be any public access, because it was pretty misleading <laughs> when I first saw that, you know, and, and looked at it, I thought, you know, there was going to be restrooms in there and, you know, you'd be able to get access in and out. But um, so that was kind of misleading, uh, just looking at it. But uh, for, yeah, you know, I, I don't think it was misleading. We said it was ut utility building. No, so no, the, perhaps no, that was an I, assumption, but it wasn't misleading on our part. I, no, no, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just. Well, saying you just in, did. In, so in I'm general. just correcting you that it was not misleading on our uh, part. Anybody who looked at the presentation or heard the narrative, there was never any promise of, of, of restrooms. So I, I'm glad that they uh, addressed that more fully, but it wasn't misleading. Okay. All right. Could you also, um, with the Main Street Bridge clearance needing 13.6 as a uh, the, the clearance, and right now it's at a little over 12 feet. Could you? Yes, yeah, uh, so I can address that yeah. one. Um, okay. Basically, we have a unit called the Oversize Overweight Unit, and they're responsible for any vehicle that exceeds 13 feet six inches. Okay. Right, so any vehicle besides a normal tractor trailer that delivers to everybody in a normal um, setting can then pass under this bridge. So that's our attempt. If we can make it, great. If we can't, well, we'll get as close as we can. But it, it basically makes it so that you only have to get a special permit to try to get under the bridge, and it will be denied because the bridge won't be high enough. Okay, thank you. Um, just one quick question. Is there going to be train service going north, or is it just going south? No. It's, uh, north and yeah, south. No. Okay, awesome. Yeah, the thank train you. Train is Springfield. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, everything will go, th it's, it's by direction. Um, so going back to the maintenance question, um, so then would that mean that the state would come out and um, – plow the parking lot and sand and salt the sidewalks. I know that the platform is heated, but would the state do that or would we re be responsible for that as well? So, um, you know, at what, some point when we look at the at the road layout there, you know, we'll, we'll have to draw some lines, I think. I don't, I don't know what Bruce's thoughts on, on what would be considered a public road and what would be considered station access only. But for the portions of the of the site that are considered station proper, um, you know, not a public road, um, and the sidewalks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our vendor uh, from Cassie would, would come out in, in snow events and, um, you know, and clear the sidewalks uh, oh. in, 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 in part of the parking lot. Um, you know, the, the heated platform, you know, it, you know, you still might get some clumping here and there um, what the heated platform does for us really is not only safety, um, uh, but also it keeps us from having a big presence on the platform, which usually requires Amtrak to have protective services out there. Because, you know, obviously someone's shoveling, they've got snow clearing, you know, it's, it's easy for someone to turn their black back on a, you know, an oncoming train, you know, and, and be in a dangerous situation. And so the heated platform, you know, keeps us clear, you know, keeps the platform clear but the crews still have to take care of um, the, uh, you know, the sidewalks um, and, and the parking. Great. Thank you very much. Anyone else have any questions? Yo, Bruce, one quick question. You know, with the busing, the key, a key point here is to be able to get the buses there. And I'm thinking, I know this won't be similar, but, or it won't be exactly, but I'm thinking of Sigourney Street where you have those buses. It would be similar ideal here where they can come in. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty efficient, you know, kind of busing drop off. Is that the similar idea for the buses to be able to get, you know, to the train? Similar idea here? Yeah, so the, the task of our designer is to accommodate right. in that gray area, in that light gray area, which is right across from the parking areas, a bus drop off. So it's a 12 foot wide area where the bus pulls into, drops off passengers and then pulls out again. That bus drop off, we're looking to accommodate either two 40 foot buses or one 60 foot bus, right. the 60 foot articulated bus. So yes, the idea is for them to 
So literally drive down Commerce Street, turn around, yep. come up and drop with the correct door side. You, you always have to have the door on the right in order right. to get the people yep. so they don't have to cross the walkway. Yeah, I'm just familiar with Sigourney Street and how efficient that is. Yeah. Yeah, that was our intent, was yep. to try to make it very efficient. And then, and it's been working out well at a lot of the stations. Yeah, if people want to, if you haven't had a chance to drive down there, it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty, uh, you know, cut and dry the way that operation works down there. Well, and you know, in fact, Mr. Mayor, when we went down, we pointed out and I brought pictures of Sigourney. Yeah. Because yeah. that was our concept. We thought that that would work well here. Yeah. Uh, and what we had always said and we always maintained, we didn't need a 50, 60 million dollar uh, train station uh, with bathrooms because if you gave us one at half the cost and you brought the station, we want people to be able to commute, to be able to get to work, be able to get across the East Coast at a lower price. And um, I think uh, both John and Bruce uh, opine that luck favors the prepared. If we hadn't started this journey two and a half, three years ago, we'd be at the end of the line. We're at the front of it now with state bonding and I think with uh, Congress because we worked hard. And I will say it was because of the innovativeness and leadership of this council. I don't know that there were many other towns that ponied up almost $4 million towards a project. And as John said, that's what caught the attention of the commissioner. I think the governor, because we, you actually voted to put town funds in and we worked with Congressman Courtney to also get an earmark that we had left over redesigned by the FTA to use for this. And uh, those gentlemen know me well and our staff well and our legislators. We won't let up. We're going to work very, very hard. We, we know it isn't over until it's built. So we'll work with our delegation, with uh, John Kissel, Carol Hall, and with uh, Representative Arnone to keep the pressure on with bonding, with funding, and with Congressman Courtney to make this a reality. And we thank them so very much for believing in us. And I think John's absolutely right. In the fall, once Bruce and his team uh, got excited and this whole thing uh, took off like a racehorse. So we appreciate their efforts. You know, the other thing, too, is there's been, again, everything's conceptual, but there's also a talk of connecting New York through what, our line to Boston. So it's not just Springfield. I know it's the, I mean, again, you're looking right in front of us, but eventually the goal is to <laughs> connect Boston to New York. So I think, <laughs> you're right, I mean. That's a lot of talk. There's yeah. a lot of talk about that. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, John. You're exactly right. I want people to be clear on that. There actually is a bigger picture here than what we're just chatting about right now. So, again, I. Like I said, the DOT, as uh, our town manager has said, you, you folks have been great. You've been a partner. I mean, in my experience, every time we work with the DOT in any project, you guys are professional. You know, you, uh, you're great to work with. And, um, you know, really in closing, it looks like there's no more questions. Anything from your team, Bruce? We, no, we, we want to make sure you give it the floor. Yeah, we just look forward to working with everyone. We have a 30% coming up. The minute it's designed, we'll release it to you. We do ask that you keep a copy um, or at least be able to distribute it to people to look at because we always are looking for comments. We are always amazed at some things that we miss that people come up with and say, hey, this would make it better. And that's what we really appreciate. John, uh, John and uh, Bruce, believe we'll, we'll put it up on billboards. So we'll get a lot of feedback. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to make sure we emphasize the DOT again, great partner in this. You folks have been great to work with, your entire team. I know you have a team of 10, I mean, or, or whatever. And again, I think the public needs to understand of what a partner. You're right, this is the beginning of, I think, something that's really going to be take off, no pun intended. And, um, and we really do appreciate you coming back tonight. And I agree, we look forward to building a partnership with the state DOT and uh, really being a, a key anchor from the New York, the eventual New York to Boston line. So we uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having flexibility. Again, we apologize for a couple of weeks ago, but um, the fact that you're here means a lot to the town of Enfield. So we thank you. It's our pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night. Thank you, guys. You have a great night. Thank you for being here. So it is 7:10. Um, we have we have a few minutes. Um, uh, do I have a motion to end the special meeting? Second. Second moved by Deputy Mayor Suzak, second by Councilor, um, was that Riley or Mangini? All those in favor of closing the special meeting? And the special meeting is closed. You have three minutes till we start the public hearing on the tax incentive. So you have three minutes before we start.
Welcome, everyone. It is 6.54. Um, we have a public hearing amending the tax in, uh, in increment financing policy regarding structure. Um, it is uh, the Enfield Town Council regular meeting of Monday, April 5th, 2021. Again, I, I'm gonna read the ground rules of this. Again, this is a quick public hearing on the TIF, um, the, what we call the TIF district and a number of par um, uh, participants on that uh, group. Um, April 5th, 2021, public hearing ground rules. A public hearing will be scheduled to allow interested re uh, residents or citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the proposed modification of the tax incentive finance policy as to the membership of the TIF Advisory Committee. Uh, item number one, roll, calls, pl roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Bosco. Here. Councilor Sakala. Here. Councilor Crisotti. Here. Councilor Hemler. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councilor Mangini. Here. Councilor Muller. Here. Councilor Riley. Here. Councilor Safraza. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councilor Ungar. Here. That's 11 members present, none absent. Thank you, Sheila. Um, the following notice of public hearing was published in the Hartford Current Wednesday, March 24, 2021. Town of Enfield legal notice. The Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, April 5, 2021, at 6.50 p.m. to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinion regarding the proposed modification of the tax increment financing policy, also known as TIF, as to the membership of the TIF Advisory Committee. Copies of the amendment are on file in the town clerk's office at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, or at www.enfield-ct.gov. Sheila M. Bailey, the Enfield Town Clerk, March 22nd, 2021. Again, the ground rules for the public hearing, there is no time limit, but I ask each person to take, not take up too much time so that everyone can have the opportunity to speak. After each person who desires has had one chance to speak, we shall permit those individuals who desire a second chance. After those individuals who desire to speak a second time, we shall permit those individuals who desire a third, desire a third fourth, et cetera. Please refrain from personalities. Um, anyone here like to speak specifically on the TIF district? Again, this is specific to the advisory committee. You know, and Lori, I mean, I, I, since we're having this, I, I, I'm a lot, Lori, just real quick, high level, Lori Wetton, our director of planning is on uh, here as well. If you wouldn't mind just a quick overview of what the change would be so the public knows. Yeah, certainly. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, basically, the template that called for the TIF policy um, advisory committee called for nine members, four of which were staff, which would be voting members, and that just shouldn't happen. So we're basically just taking the staff off as voting members and just making them um, advisory. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that. A pretty simple explanation. Again, anyone here would like to speak specifically on this, this, refer uh, this um, public hearing? Going once? Going twice, thank you. Anything else, Lori, before I close the public hearing? I think that's it, sir. Right. Public hearing is now closed, and we move, uh, it is, oh, well, actually, you got a minute, I think. So sorry, we're at 6.57, sorry, I went to the public. Two more minutes, right at seven, we will start. I mean, I like, we have to be prompt on a regular meeting, and then we will start the regular meeting in two minutes. You have a re quick recess of two minutes, and um, thank you.
call the regular meeting at 7 o'clock on Monday, April 5th, 2021. I call the regular meeting of the Enfield Town Council to order. Um, item number one, please rise. Prayer, Councillor Riley. Springtime is a time of renewal and rebirth of optimism and hope. A time to really open our eyes and hearts to the beauty that surrounds us. Everyone needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in, where nature may heal and give strength to the body and soul. Now is the time when we all need to reflect, heal, and grow hope for the next step in our lives and in our community. We pray for those that we have lost along the way and for those that are still suffering. Lord, help us to find peace in the simple joys of walking barefoot on a sandy beach, playing in the rain, and touching the cool earth with our hands. Help us to make the most of opportunities to experience solitude while enjoying the peacefulness of nature. Help us to share these joys with our children and to teach them to value all you have made so generations to come can experience these things too. Thank you for allowing us to benefit from the beauty of all that your hand has created. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three, Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Riley. Present. Councilor Sopraza. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzette. Here. Councilor Ungayer. Here. Councilor Bosco. Here. Councilor Sakala. Here. Councilor Prasadi. Here. Councilor Hamler. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councilor Mingini. Here. Councilor Muller. Here. The 11 members present, none absent. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, moving on to item four on the uh, agenda of fire evacuation announcement in case of a fire. We have doors or exit doors at the back of the chambers. Please orderly go left or right out the doors and out to the parking lot. Or there's doors to our left to some members right. Go through those doors. It'll be doors right out the, into the hallway to the left. Please go down, use those doors, go down the stairs, and again out into the parking lot in case of a fire. Moving on to item five, minutes of preceding meetings. The regular meeting of March 15, 2021 to have a motion to approve. By Second. Councilor Butler, seconded by Councilor Riley. Any deletions, additions, corrections? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions, 11 in favor, zero against, Sheila. Item six, special guests, we have none. Moving on to item seven, public communications. Again, we, uh, uh, we have, you have, make sure I'm clear, you have five minutes to uh, speak the first time. You are allowed two, two opportunities in the first public communications, then three minutes the second. We have an hour from to where we, it's 7.05 if needed. And again, we ask that you please refrain from personalities. And again, your name and address, and you must be an infill resident to speak. Uh, anyone would like to speak for the council this time? Yes, sir, Lucian. Welcome, sir. Just make sure the button's on and the uh, floor is yours. Okay. Is this one on? Is it? Yeah. So the red light's on. Welcome. Can everybody hear me okay with the mask? Yep. yep. You, might, well, you can scream. Go right ahead. Huh? You can scream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm joking. Lucian Lafay, 54 Kimberly Drive, Enfield, Connecticut. Uh, Vice Chairman of the Enfield Veterans Council. And I'm here to announce that we are planning a Memorial Day parade this year. Woo! So after careful consideration, the Enfield Veterans Council is happy to announce that we will host the Enfield Mor 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 yeah, Memorial Day Parade. The parade is on May 30th at 1 p.m. Parade participants will start at the Enfield Street School, head north on Enfield Street to the Enfield Town Green. The parade is to remember and honor our military that gave the ultimate sacrifice. At the Town Green, we will have a wreath-laying ceremony to remind us that our freedom comes with a price. We invite everyone to come out and show your support by waving your American flags along the parade route. And we remind you to please follow the CDC guidelines in wearing your mask and social distancing. 
The parade route is about a mile and a half, so there's plenty of room for people to spread out. And as a parade participant, it's nice to see some of the people south of Route 190 on the parade route. <laughs> so any organization wishing to participate in the parade can either contact me at 860-463-7168 or Frank Pacini at 860-819-0320 or Tony Torres at 860-394-9973. And as it stands right now, we have a guest speaker that's coming up from the Connecticut Veterans Department. Uh, we have a soloist to do our national anthem at the Green, and we're working with the school band. They're working on getting some volunteers together to get a small contingent at the Green to do our traditional service songs. Awesome. And awesome. again, anybody wishing to participate, contact us at those phone numbers. And uh, we're looking forward to kicking this off and finally having a parade after missing the last two in a row to COVID. I think it's time to open up and move forward. Great. Anybody have any questions for me? It's not back and forth. It's but not I'm back sure and forth, but counselor communication. I'm sure some people are going to say something. Okay. So please stick around. All right. Great news. Thank you. All right. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else like to speak for the council this time? Come right up. Welcome. Just make sure the light's on. You're good. You have five minutes when you're ready. Name and address. Hi, everyone. Uh, Matt Kremwitz uh, from 4 Hummingbird Lane, um, Enfield resident since 2014. Uh, I'd like to sort of touch on some of the themes from earlier this evening uh, in terms of um, the train service. Uh, I have a similar, uh, I guess, proposal or opinion um, in terms of connecting larger hubs of service to smaller ones. Um, I've been in communication with uh, town manager and um, Mike Ludwig, mayor, in uh, regards to uh, a sidewalk addition to my neck of the woods, um, there's currently a sidewalk that runs along uh, Abbey Road uh, for a couple of hundred feet, um, connecting my street, Hummingbird Lane, all the way up to Boba Link, um, which gives uh, the residents in these communities, the Kimberly community and the whole Red Wing area, and even some across from me, um, not familiar, I can't remember that street off the top of my head, but uh, it's about 400 homes um, that have relative safe pedestrian access for uh, walking, jogging, running, whatever, um, either along that sidewalk or along all of those side streets. But the last stretch there from Boba Link to Town Farm contains no sidewalks. Um, and I'm just uh, here to bring that up. I understand that there might be a uh, roads referendum this fall, and I think it'd be a great addition to that, to complete that uh, pedestrian access and connect that last mile per, uh, to, per se to, to the bike path, which runs along uh, Town Farm. Um, and that's all. Thank you, sir. Yep. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak for the council at this time? Anyone else like to speak for the first time? For the second time? Lucian or Matt? Okay, well, hearing none, public communications is closed. Thank you all. We move right on to council communications. Councilor Mangini, item eight. Thank you. I just have a couple of things. Um, one or two housekeeping. Maybe I missed it, but do we vote on the special meeting of March 15th? I think we missed that. On the minutes for the special? No, we did. We oh, did? no, the special meeting was not, so do we need to add that for, Sheila, I don't know, do we need to add that for the next meeting? Uh, Councillor Mangini's right, we only have the regular meeting listed. Wasn't the special meeting canceled? Uh, well, that's a good point. That was with the state. Due to technical DOT. issues? Sorry, it was state DOT, so we technically so, didn't so, have it. So, okay, so then we don't have to address it if, if it was canceled? Correct. Correct. 
we did not have anything, no. We started no. at 7. So we just canceled. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Sheila, for reminding me. That's right. Yep. Thank, thank Good you. Question. That's a fair question. I, I mean, I was just trying to yep. catch up. And then the other um, question I, I have, <clears throat> um, Mayor Mike, when we were doing the resolution for the TIF, for the public hearing, the date um, on here, last paragraph, be further resolved, is April 15th, 2021. Today's date is April 5th, so I would offer an amendment. So when we get there, I will go to you first. Okay. So you can make that amendment. Two good points, um, and I will go to you first when we go to that to make the After I read the resolution, I'll allow you to make the amendment. Okay. No, fair, good catch. Thank yep. you. Uh, um, excuse me, then there's um, a request from the Garden Club that I received. Apparently, they're having their uh, plant sale, their spring uh, opening plant sale, May 8th, and they're wondering about the porta potties at the um, uh, Rotary um, Senior Garden. And uh, again, I, I'm sure other groups are interested in finding out when those porta potties are going to be placed as well. So maybe through our mayor to town manager, we could get some information out on that. <clears throat> And two other issues. We do not have a current picture of President Biden, and um, Ned is very lonely up there. So I'm wondering how we can go about getting our picture of our president, one. And then two, our council, our current council, has not had our photo done. And I'm, I'm thinking with nicer weather coming, maybe we could go outside on the town council steps at some point. We, we don't have a picture of this council. So I just want to throw that out there two, as well. Two good points, uh, and yes. Yep. Thank you. Yep, that, that's all. Yep. I don't want to take everybody's time. Well, thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the, uh, any other, I'm sorry, Councillor, any communications? Councillor Ungar. Uh, I just wanted to say I agree with that extension of the sidewalk that Matt was talking about. Um, I've walked those sidewalks there and it stops and I'd have to turn on bobbling um, through the mayor to the town manager. Um, am, am I correct in the assumption that the path on Town Farm will continue up Town Farm Road and go past Grassmere? Correct. correct. Actually, correct, yes. That's I correct. can answer that for the town manager. That's the answer, that answer is correct. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I did hear some communication about um, if they did put that sidewalk there, that it would cross over Abbey and then cross over to Town Farm, when they could just continue it straight yep. if that path is just going to continue up So, Town So, Farm. yeah, I, I will address that, and if you maybe in the manager report, if you want to, I'll address okay. that in a second, actually. Okay, yep. good idea. Anyone else have any? Councillor Riley. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, thanks for the great news about uh, the Memorial Day Parade. It would be great to see some awesome activity going on that's going to be a good week for our town. We're going to have first readers on that Monday, and then that following 30th, we'll have the parade. Things are looking up. This is good. Anyone else have any comments? I have three quick. Again, Council Riley's right. Great news. Parade. I mean, it's time to get back. Um, you know, to see we do you guys do a great job at the parade and hopefully people contact you if you Lucian could you send us the email of those addresses so we also can if people ask us we can or excuse me with the phone numbers that we can have them addressed to you as well you. yeah great news and again for the record May 30th one o'clock okay it's great news um, two, two other things to the the sidewalks to address your question and, and Matt's question so the as we're having as part of the hopefully again potentially as part of the road referendum we're pricing out sidewalks from town farm to connect to baba link and then possibly we're just looking at the cost again it would be these will all be public hearings i'll be subject to vote of the council uh and you know to actually extend the the sidewalks from red wing all the way out to um broadbrook because there are so actually i i drove i actually walked it there are sidewalks that are in tough, tough shape from, I'd say, probably where Grant Street is going, going east, and they're in tough shape. So we'll price it out. People will be able to speak at a public hearing, um, which will probably be in the summer time frame, Matt, just so you know. But yes, that's to your question and to, and to Matt's question. You're correct. The, I, I don't have the data. I think the plan got approved, the funding for us to extend the bike path from now the current spot, which is the four corners, out past Grassmere to, to, to uh, Broadbrook. Yep. 
my understanding, maybe next year, right, or late in the year, that we may have some movement. Maybe you can. I know, I know it's still up in the air, but there, that is within the near future. And to what you know, Matt meant, you can actually now connect Town Firm to Broadwork one way. And then, if you actually extended the sidewalks to Abbey, you'd actually have yourself a pretty nice walking walking area. So that potentially could be part of the referendum. It'll be up to when we have public hearings, what the public input will be, and of course, what the council's appetite to put on the referendum. So that'll be addressed. Yeah, and third, thirdly, um, want to give everyone a heads up as we're kind of on a theme here of actually walking and getting people outside. Um, you know, there's a lot of our residents use the walking trails up in East Long Meadow, which was, you know, former um, railroad tracks that have been converted to a nice trail. Our understanding they're actually thinking or in the process of extending that all the way to the Enfield border, which would be great. And council, I mean, uh, Representative Hall has been working with, you know, the uh, DOT. The lease for the for the Enfield line is up, and we have an opportunity to possibly have our own rails to trails in a multi-state project. And again, I want to be clear: what we saw this at six o'clock was the passenger rail on, on the river. This is the old freight line out in Hazardville, Hazardville section of town. So it's a separate discussion. I know we're, I don't want people to get confused when it comes to the trains, and. And we actually, uh, you all received a letter from the East, so it's a bipartisan effort. East Windsor actually, along with the state senator, I think his name is Anwar, and I apologize if I'm saying his name incorrectly, um, actually proved they, they are in favor of extending that rails of trails down to East Windsor. So we actually could have a multi-state park slash hiking trail from East Windsor all the way up to East Long Meadow. We'd have a multi-state project. Um, we need to, you know, there's, we need to sort of move if we want to make it a, a rocking trail because the lease is up and we're working with Representative Hall. We would like to invite to our next meeting to give everyone an update on what she's been working on and where it is on possibly making, again, a nice outdoor trail that I know a lot of our residents, and I've heard from many of them, who actually go up to East Long Meadow and use that line so and use that walking trail. So this would be a great opportunity for us to continue that sort of the theme of getting people outside and walking, enjoying nature. It's a beautiful section of town. Maybe people keep, keep get tired of hearing me use the word beautiful because we talk about it here in the northern part of the river, but it really is a great section of town and it would be really a great, again, talking about getting back to nature, talking about gr being green in the environment, getting people outside, hiking, you know, possibility. I know, I mean, there's already possibilities whether you could Maybe make it you know, handicap accessible, those sort of things. A lot of good ideas. We'll need to work with the federal government, but we need input from people, whether they would like to see that, and we need it quickly. Because again, we'd like the state not to, to extend the lease to the current lease seller, who's had over 20 something years to do something with those tracks, and it's time for us as a town to take advantage of what people want to do, which is get outside, enjoy nature in a beautiful section of town, and we can connect to our partners up in Massachusetts. So that'll be coming up. We're hoping to, ex again, have uh, Representative Hall here uh, next, next meeting as a special guest to explain. So he's in some exciting projects to get people outside in that section of town, all over every part of town. And it's interesting, I'll, I'll leave it at this. If you actually do some research, I know we're in the northern section of the country, but out west, they are developing the, in some of the, you know, sort of, uh, you know, not far west, but central west, uh, they're developing trails and hiking trails all through the communities. And yes, I know they have more open space than we do, but it's something that everyone wants, no matter what age you are. This is, again, nonpartisan, bipartisan effort. Again, we're hoping to be able to connect with East Windsor and work with them as well. So more to come where hopefully people can contact me directly. I know we'll have a few comments on some of the you know, leasing opportunities. And the last thing I'll say is I know the lease is up, but there has been some work being done. I was driving by Westerly westerly drive over the weekend which is you know right off hazard ave and i i understand the federal government and the state may not always let us know when work is being done in town but through a man, uh, question to the manager maybe to the attorney have we at least been adv advised or appraised of whatever work is being done on that rail because there clearly is work being done and i'm and i know they don't have to tell us but it'd be great that they actually just let us know that some work is being done so maybe a question for you for the town manager report council spraza Excuse me, Deputy Mayor Suzak, excuse me. Sorry, Carl. This Mike talks a lot. <laughs> Actually, to springboard off a of mic, that is one of the most requested things that we have is 
why are we not converting that? And for 20 some odd years, we've been saying, because we're waiting for the lease to be up. And I know I've requested and Councilor Mangini's requested when we first started work, seeing work done, we knew the lease was up because um, Representative Hall had started researching this and started pushing for it. And uh, I'd like to see that done. I mean, that could connect to Linear East, Linear West. It goes right by the Scantic. I mean, it would really open up a tremendous amount of outdoor space that could be, as Mike's pointed out, portions of it handicapped accessible, which we don't have a lot of that in our outdoor spaces. So on that note, I'm gonna take make a motion to suspend the rules and move items A1, A2, E, F, G, H, I, J, and K to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Second. Any suspend rules, seconded by Councilor Ungeyer. <laughs> um, any discussion on a motion? Hearing none by a show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstention, motion passes. Any other council, Councilor Bosco, any other quick? The problem is there's work getting done on them, but only where you look. So what he's do probably doing is because he knows the lease is up, he's doing work where it's high visibility because nothing's happening anywhere else on that rail and something else needs to be done with that rail. I mean, <clears throat> I remember probably 10, 12 years ago, we started talking about him with the contaminated railroad ties and he never cleaned them up. So we really need to, to look into it and see what's actually getting repaired on them rails. Thank you. Any other council communications? Hearing none, turn it over to the manager. Number, uh, item nine, town manager report, which will be your budget presentation. Well, I'll uh, first answer a couple of the questions. Ooh, sorry, sorry, you, you um, take that order. Sorry about that. Um, thank you for answering the question on the sidewalks. Matt, it was a pleasure meeting you. He sent a very uh, courteous and civil email that got the ball rolling. We sent it to Donald Nunes and his folks to look at it for the upcoming referendum. And the mayor uh, was keenly interested and took the time to go out there and, and walk it. Um, so thank you, Matt. It's nice to have citizens participate and actually come to a meeting, so it's good to have you. Um, in regard to the rail to trail, um, I have participated in two meetings thus far, uh, one last year with DOT that Representative Carol Hall arranged, and then we had another one last month. So uh, my concern was listening back and forth. It is mostly state and federal. I'll answer your question about Amtrak doing work in town. We're the last to know. Yeah, they yeah. never tell us. We yeah. do inquire, but it's we have to chase them down. Uh, they, they don't have to do it, and they don't like to do it, and they don't do it. But we'll pass it on to the town attorney to see if he can make a, a polite inquiry. So I wanted to know our legal rights in regard to the rail to trail, so the town attorney will have a report in regard to that uh, and an update. If we start at the foundation, what rights do we have as a town? And then, of course, there's always you know what the council would like to do, uh, or, or support as the mayor said if you want to support it um, that's always something we can do despite the fact we may not, not have legal standing but I'll defer to him um, two encouraging things um, Charlotte won not only the parade but as we previously stated we've been slowly opening all of you know libraries and uh, the senior center town hall thus far has been by appointment only but commencing Monday May 3rd we will be open uh, at Town Hall and all other town facilities. So I think that's a positive step for spring. And uh, the next month, I'm happy to report the opening of our farmer's market due to popular demand and the uh, request of almost all the vendors, 80 plus who all seem to want to return, uh, asked if we could do it much sooner this year. We last year did it the latter part of July. We're gonna have a grand kickoff and opening uh, June 6th here at the town hall and I'm informed by Connie Preventure our market master that all the vendors are anxious to come back So I think it's going to be a, as big and probably better this summer in our second year So we invite you all and we'll give you some more information um, as we get closer to that date All right, what we're going to move to now and Kasha So we'll do you want just in case before any questions for the town manager before he gets to his, sorry Just make sure so before he gets to his budget for any questions I know he dressed. I want to make sure you, uh, you know, Councilor Riley, yeah. So, when would we be able to make a decision if we wanted to, um, like, sign a letter 
going in with East Windsor on the rails to trails after you guys do your homework? Well, I, I, I'll it? defer. You can hear from the town attorney, okay. and he'll give you the, the uh, legal stance, and then it would be deferred to council as to whether or not, you know, at the next meeting you would gotcha. like to take some um, action. Okay, good. Thanks. You're welcome. I think without further ado, sir, you guys have the floor. Well, well, well we, we, we hope. All right. I would just like to say at the offset that the, the directors and the departments have worked very hard on this budget to keep it within confines and um, to have a, a good result. It's not easy reviewing programs and worthy projects, especially uh, in CIP, but I think we've done a very good job of presenting you with the budget um, that addresses our needs, but also I think some of our wants. We've all seen that there is a desire when we did our plan of development, we put that out there, we got a lot of feedback from our residents. Not only do they want taxes to stay low, but they want recreational opportunities, they want walking paths, they want things to do outside. And that's shared by both the youth and by seniors. And I think, you know, there's a time, I mean, it, we always hear the saying in the weddings, a time to reap, a time to sow, a time to plant. I think this, this budget does a little of each. We've had great fiscal and conservative management of this town's finances for 30 years. And as a result of that this evening, we're gonna reap some benefits of it. And we're gonna be able to reinvest and plant and do some great things for this town because you know, the reason we're able to do some of these things is because of our grand list expanding. That's a constant battle to do it. You need people to come, you need them to expand their homes, you need them to build new homes, you need businesses to come, you need industry to come, and that shares the burden. And as a result, we all can enjoy lower taxes. So we can't just rest on our laurels. People look around now. They have a lot of choices as to where they want to live. We need to take care of our seniors who are uh, at a part of the life they want to enjoy themselves but stay in town. And we want to attract young families and also families that are here and give them something healthy to do outside, especially now that the pandemic is passing. So I think it's a silver lining. A lot of people want to be outside. They want to get off the couch. They want to get off the computer. And they want to get out there and move around. So hopefully this budget will accommodate that uh, desire. Last year's FY 2021 adopted budget was $138,911,188, and that was the total of the town side and the Board of Education. The proposed FY 2022 proposed budget is $146,541,970. This represents a value change, which means an increase of $7,630,782, or 5.49%. As you're going to see, that value change of 7.6 million will be addressed in the in the next couple of slides as to how we're going to pay for that. As always, the town has contractual and mandatory responsibilities and increases. Health insurance this year, a 15% increase across the board, over $870,000. Contractual union increases in wages, $860,000. Bond, principal, and interest, this is for the last Roads 2015. Referendum in Enfield High School, $496,000 a year. Uh, this year, a new and recurring cost will be uh, $263,000 uh, to due to the police accountability bill and its requirements that the town will now have to conform to. And this is apart from the over million dollars we sent on body cams and car cameras. So that's a total increase within our basic operating budget of $2,491,826. Well, how do we pay for it? How do we fund it? Well, as I previously mentioned, we were fortunate in that we've had a grand list increase in 2020 uh, of $2,702,175. So the way I like to look at it is the cost of running your home. What's it cost to do it last year? What's it gonna to cost to do next year? You can see the increase is almost two and a half million, but we had increased revenues within on the town side of 27, just on the grand list. So it looks as though we have a, a, a surplus of about $300,000. But as I'm going to tell you in a little bit, we last year held the line, the year before we cut positions. This year is a time that we have to invest or we're gonna have, we're gonna to start to see uh, dire consequences. Two areas, one in social services, and you'll hear that at, your, uh, at the presentation next Saturday, we have included a grants and performance manager and we have included the uh, reinstatement of two EMT positions. That's about 250,000. So we have equity here, we have about 
bringing in new funds to pay for the additional funds. And that's on operating our house, turning the lights on, turning the electricity, and running town government. Of course, we are dependent on state revenue from the governor. His proposed budget this year for 2022 is as follows. Pilot-owned real property is the same. It's level funded, 655840 Basically, that's what we get payment in lieu of taxes for state facilities, primarily in Enfield prisons. Pilot colleges and hospitals, that's all other state property that's exempt in the town. Uh, uh, that's 17209 Local capital improvement, which is LOSIP, that's used on capital infrastructure, money from the state, and that is 326-332. Town aid to road grant, which is for what it sounds like, for aid to our roads, 535000 plus. Grants for municipal projects, uh, and that primarily is within highways, is 256875 the money we receive from the Mashantucket, Pequot, and Mohegan grants, one million two twenty-four plus, and then of course the largest from the state, the education cost sharing, our base entitlement uh, to the board is twenty-nine million five fifty-one. So the money we receive from the state is going to be approximately thirty-two million five hundred and sixty-seven thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars. On paper, it's two point four percent more than last year, or projected to be $778,692. We didn't count on any of the increase. We level funded because in Enfield we don't count our chickens until they're hatched. So we hope it comes, but we, we, we didn't include it in our budget projections. Likewise, we've heard much about the American Rescue Act funding. This is for COVID relief. Uh, best on our best uh, projections because of information we re we've received uh, from Representative Arnone and Congressman Courtney. It appears that our allocation to the town on the town side, which does not include the Board of Ed, which is actually exceeds this amount, um, is projected to be $8,216,404. Just gonna touch on it briefly, because the guidance on this, and it's, it's, it's uh, evolving every day. Uh, CCM is going to have a seminar, then they cancel it. Krog is gonna have one, then they cancel it. Our accountant is gonna have it, and then they cancel it, because nobody truly understands everything that's in this act, because it's so complex and it's long. But a couple of things we have been assured of, town municipalities cannot cut their taxes. If you cut your taxes, you will not get the funding. You cannot delay planned tax increases because that's really the same thing by another method, and they don't want you supplanting your operating budgets with this federal money. What can it be used for? Well, among other things, and what we're going to focus on, what we know they've said we can use it on, is sewer, water projects, and COVID-related projects are eligible. So we intend, if we receive this money appropriately, we've uh, least the Enfield Express, and we're going to talk about that. That's been an integral part of our COVID response. We're going to seek to, to spend some of those funds to purchase the building. And we have pump stations that we deferred uh, doing because we understand we may be eligible to spend this money. And in total, that represents about $2 million of funding that we would be able to use for CIP infrastructure from the federal government. I told you about the two sides. The two sides is we, we have about 2.7 million on our operating, how to run the town, and we've paid for that with the increase in the grand list and some higher than expected returns on uh, investments. The other part of the uh, budget, which we look at every year, is the CIP, the Capital Improvement Program. These are uh, programs that go across the town. There's never enough money to do them all, so we prioritize. But this year, as I said in the beginning, we've increased on the first slide the increase is about, as we said, seven and a half million dollars. 2.7 million is coming from the increase in the grand list. And over last year, money that we always take from our unallocated fund each year, this year we've increased it by about $4 million to pay for these following projects, which I think are worthy and are going to really enhance the quality of uh, life in the town and make a real investment to the future. The Higgins Park walking path, $638,000, this is behind Town Hall, and we're gonna show some graphics after I get through this list. Higgins Park Playground and a basketball court behind us in the, in the Higgins Park, 275,000. We've talked about, we're gonna, we're gonna keep our promise about the transfer station improvements, $610,000. A splash pad at Parkman School, 689, excuse me, $100,000. I was gonna say, boy, that really went up since I printed it. 
Um, Brainerd Park Field, $689,000 in improvements. And again, I'm going to talk about these in more specificity in a moment. P Powder Hollow is six eighty nine, dollars um, and so is Brainerd Park Field. Brainerd Park will be a new field to replace the one behind Town Hall, um, and that will be um, done because we don't want to take away a field from those who are currently enjoying it just to do a new park. Uh, Enfield High School track and turf improvements. This is $689,000. I'm going to touch upon it in a moment. This is another joint effort between us and the uh, Board of Education. The ADC demolition, this is uh, when Council last year discontinued the adult daycare. Um, it was determined under the lease that we were responsible to demolish the building. We've worked with the Housing Authority. They've taken a vote. We tried to see if they wanted to use it for another purpose or for town purposes during the building consolidation. Uh, none were forthcoming. So we funded the demolition. We've had a bid, and it's going to be $67,000. Um, we put in every year so we can do in-house architectural and engineering on state bids of 187500 um, We've identified very exciting, a lot of great things the library's done during COVID. There's been a need, and we need to upgrade the community room, and that's $40,000. Uh, the Orlando Drive culvert, you may recall a couple years ago, we had a collapse over there of a sewer line. Uh, we addressed that and remediated it. This has been left uh, out there, but this is in dire uh, 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 danger of collapsing and closing Orlando, so we have to address it, and DEEP is on us to address. That's 351000 approximately. South River Street Bridge, we know of that project. This is the annual amount we're putting in to match the state funding of $137,800. Uh, the purchase of the Alden Street Gym, as we've discussed, we already put in uh, uh, in November $400,000 to convert the Santa Dalbridge Gym for a 9,000 square foot basketball court. It'll be used for that pickleball, there will be a climbing wall, there will be an indoor walking, primarily for uh, seniors in the winter. And this is, we're not quite sure because we're negotiating with the owner. We have some issues to work out, but we believe it's going to be, be between two and 300000 to purchase it, so we're putting in right down the middle two fifty. Always concerned about first responders and police and public safety. Uh, we did a revamp of dispatch and bought new radios for the vehicles and our officers about, my goodness, time flies, about 11 years ago. They're at their useful end. The replacement cost of that and that project is going to be approximately $1.7 million. Um, so we're going to start budgeting yearly now so we have the sufficient funds. So we're putting $689,000 in. I'll tell you, we're also working, it's very exciting, collaboratively with some area towns to see if they want to share costs and go out to bid with us in addition to our five fiber departments. So I think we're going to get a, a, a good bang for our buck. Uh, the police department, again, it's time to upgrade our uh, sidearms and also a voice recorder system that's 46,280 it's split 50 50 between them on the sidearms we get a trade so the cost is is really low when you figure what they give us uh, uh, for the trades and the cost of the new weapons for all almost 100 officers is in the range of $24,000 for top uh, weapons which have been recommended by our firearms officers EPD Joint uh, Operations Center. Um, this has been a tremendous success. It's aided us in a couple of major um, uh, events we've had in, over the last year with camera systems. This is a commitment to increase and expand that coverage uh, for the safety of our residents and use. It's been an instrumental tool in solving crimes, going to the tapes and, and seeing the perpetrators of the license plate of a car. And we're going to continue with that program uh, because it's been so successful. Uh, the rest, we have now crack seal program we do every year uh, to seal cracks, $50,000. Uh, council chamber audio enhancements, we did all the HD and the upgrades, but as you saw now, due to COVID, we had some deficits, so we want to address that and upgrade the uh, chamber audio system of 47000 The DPW fuel tank and replacement, you know we've done the one away with the one at the police department the one at dpw has a limited life expectancy so again we're going to start squirreling this away every year so that we will be able to replace it when it comes due that's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars interestingly as you've seen in the federal government their commitment to electric cars and charging stations is astronomical it's in the trillions of dollars um, i think we want to be eligible for that we've had some talks kosh and i with the federal dot that's spearheading it i think we want to be on the forefront of this and the cusp so we've put in for two 
electric vehicles and a charging station station at Town Hall. Um, and we're going to try it out for low impact for blight officers and probably uh, the couriers and see how it goes. And I think that will put us in good stead when we then look to get grants with the federal government to say, look at we already are doing it. Um, so I'm very excited. And of course, the charging stations are produced right here in town by Control Module. And we've talked to them. Kosh will work with them to get a favorable price. And they're very excited to have a station in, in, in their hometown. Uh, one DPW heavy lift truck at 150. Uh, a sidewalk machine, a, a Vetrec, which is a snow clearing machine of 40,000. You both, you're all are familiar with the two roofs we started. These are our shares. Eli Whitney and Hazardville Memorial, 241,150. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're doing an ambulance remount. We've been doing one a year. We're going to have to actually start replacing uh, ambulances in total next year. This isn't in the CIP. It's in a lease package. That's 43,000. Uh, 10 police cruisers. We didn't do any last year. We have 16 over 100,000 miles on them. So we need to start replacing them because um, the, the cost of uh, maintenance and repairs is going to become prohibitive shortly. But we wanted to put those in. We also were reviewing, uh, Mr. Wilcox, uh, the uh, moving away from leases. We did it during a time when we were very, very short on money and it was a way to extend funds, but it is very complicated. There is a great deal of work involved in it, and it does cost some, some more than outright purchases. So we'll be reviewing that with the appropriate subcommittees and have a recommendation for next year's budget. Now, as I alluded to before, well, what does this cost in the town? Where are we? We have a policy in town that the minimum fund balance requirement is 9% of the operating budget. So the operating budget is the total number we talked to you about for the town and the Board of Ed to run the town. We have to maintain 9% of that. Given the current operating budget, operating budget, that would be we'd have to have 13 million seven hundred and eighty-seven thousand two nine hundred and twenty dollars in the bank for our rainy day fund so i wanted you to know that with what we're spending on the cip the additional four million over last year after we make those purchases in this budget we will still have 20.3 million dollars in the rainy day fund which is 6.5 million dollars excess of the minimum requirement so we are still being very prudent stewards and being very fiscal responsible responsible to invest in a way that behooves the community but isn't going to put us in a tough position in two, three years. I was very careful with John and with Kasha to make sure that whatever positions we were funding and we were doing, we knew the grand list and what we had would be able to pay for it. Next year, when we look at CIP, if things aren't as rosy, then you don't do as many projects. But we didn't bite on more than we can chew. We didn't take on recurring costs that we didn't know we could afford. So no tax increase. Zero dollars equals zero dollar increase, despite those beneficial programs that we are uh, outlining to you and proposing this evening. The mill rate then will have remained constant since 2020. It was 34.23. Last year's budget in 2021, 34.23. The proposed mill rate, 34.23. No increase in the mill rate. We've all oftentimes told you how we translate. What does that mean? Uh, a mill rate is $34.23 for every $1,000 of taxable value. We tax a home at 70% of its value to come up with the market value in the town assessor's office, and then we multiply that by the mill rate. So for an average home in Enfield uh, of $200,000, the property taxes are approximately $4,792, and that will remain the same. There will be no increase in that. There will be no diminution in services either. This year shows the historical mill rate, shows that there was a, um, a modest, uh, about a mill, one mill rate increase in 2019, and for the last three years, including 2022, it remained steady at 34.23. All right, where do we get the money to pay for this? First, property taxes. That's the prime, uh, that's really the one of the only ways that, or the largest ways that towns, municipalities, and cities in Connecticut can raise money. Um, property taxes raise $82 million a year. Motor vehicle and other taxes, approximately $21 million. Intergovernmental revenues are $32 million, 121 roughly. That's for conveyance taxes, real estate transactions, recordings. Charges for services, 
Oh, excuse me. Uh, that's charges for services. Intergovernment revenues are the state revenues I talked about earlier from the state of Connecticut that total that. Charges for services are conveyance taxes and recordings and the like. Um, investments, rental income, and other is a million one. Fines and forfeitures, that's usually blight and some of those other types of things, 14,000. Licenses and permits, you know, predominantly in the building department, building permits, 944. So we have generated by that uh, and those sources, $139,262,613. Where does that money go? We developed this a couple years ago because I think a taxpayer, based on that $200,000 average household paying $4,700.92, uh, a year in property taxes, this is what your bill breaks down to. It isn't on the bill, but we thought it'd be appropriate to share with people, and we'll put it on our website as well. Um, 2,358 goes to your public schools, 559 goes to public works, 547, when we say transfers, that's for parks, recreation, senior center, CIP projects, public safety is $484. Debt service, and we talked about that for the roads, projects, the high school, um, soon water pollution control and JFK, but uh, $428. Pensions benefits, 173. General government, which is all the other departments that run, town clerks, uh, town manager, HR, $121. Uh, development services, which is what Lori Whitten and her crew do uh, to help promote and hopefully invest in the community, get people to come here and invest in and Grow the Grand List, $31, and then other miscellaneous water, electric, and whatnot, $35. So I think that's a good little chart so people know the last two. Where does the money come from, and where is it going? Our budget timeline, tonight, April 5th, we propose the budget. Presentations by directors to the council will be this Saturday, April 10th. April 14th will be the public hearing on the budget, as we did last year. Following Saturday, Council Deliberations on the Budget, that's April 17th. If there's any follow-up, we have that following um, week. Budget adopted, we put the 19th, but if we need to meet uh, Monday or Tuesday or change that date, we usually do it much later in May, which I thought there's no reason to, to wait, keep everybody in suspense for a whole month after you've decided. So we have a little wiggle room there. Um, I don't know that it will be done that date, but uh, hope springs eternal. And then once you do, pass it, it will become effective July 1st, 2021. So the highlights, the Higgins Park walking field, playscape and basketball court, splash pad at Parkman, new field at Brainerd Park, upgrades and new field lighting at Powder Hollow Park, two electric vehicles and a charging station. I think it's important to note that our pension is funded at 95%, which is much higher than the average in Connecticut, but certainly in the nation. Um, we have a strong fund balance, as we said. We'll be left with over $20 million in the bank. We received the Eversource credit this year for work at the uh, water pollution control, which is going to help us defer costs there. That was $500,000, and we're expecting another stipend from them. Uh, and then for public safety, the two additional EMTs and the remount of the ambulance funded and 10 new police cruisers. I think this is interesting and it's, it's, it's fun for our residents to look forward to because depending on the council when you deliberate, we could start this as soon as this summer. People always ask, I know we, we had a booth last summer uh, or the last year we had the 4th of July and people said, oh, it'll never happen, it'll take 20 years. Well, no, um, if funded and approved by the council, we'll start it this summer. Uh, if you look at this, this is, do you have a cursor there, uh, Kash? On the left, now this is the, if you look, this is really behind, directly behind the uh, Thompsonville uh, fire station where the current skateboard park is. This is where a new basketball court will go. Going around the entire green that will be graded, the green will be a beautiful park with a one-third. Now, most at the high schools, you have a quarter-mile uh, uh, track. This will be a quarter-mile and a one-third track for our residents. What we're going to do then, closest, it will really be behind directly behind the town hall parking where Kasha is showing you is a new playscape. It's going to be very similar. We're going to show a slide about that um, for the young people, a playscape there. Um, what are you pointing to, Kasha? I can't read it. The shade, the shade structure. Um, and then we just showed, and we're going to talk about this in a moment above it, behind St. Dalbert's where we're making the improvements is a proposed 25-meter pool and a splash pad. 
and adjacent to that behind Enfield Express, which we now control and hope to own, is all the additional parking so that everybody who comes will have a place to park, whether you use the basketball, whether you're at the pool, whether you want to walk on the trail, or whether you want to go to the playscape. That, in addition to the town hall parking, doubles it. This we is our rendering of the playground at Higgins Park, uh, recreation we're consulting with. We've already talked to the vendor. It's a beautiful, large uh, playscape, very similar to the one that is was tremendously well used at the Central Library. So it's gonna be close to that because we've gotten feedback and people love it and I think they're gonna love this one too. Splash pads, splash pads, splash pads. If I heard any more about splash pads, I think my head would explode. So knowing that that's what the council has talked about and our citizens have talked about, Kasha being much younger and more exuberant with young children realized and came to me and said, well, and you're gonna see in a moment, we really need this. People move to towns because of splash pads. It's low cost. We've factored in the cost of the water. That'll be at our presentation from, from Donald. And this is a beautiful and we've talked to the vendor. We're gonna have some input about do you want splashing daisies do you want splashing tulips that kind of thing but this is a really large one because we i know it's going to be heavily used at the cost of approximately a hundred thousand dollars the reason we chose parkman to start is because we consulted with chris Drezik, uh the superintendent this has the amenities it has the water supply the electrical it has the tennis courts it has a great playscape and it has ample parking so we thought everybody could enjoy it and the reason i want them to enjoy it and i hope that we're going to move quickly on this uh, you folks know that you know i don't really grow moss on you know any of our rocks they they move pretty quickly where parts are tough to get things are delayed i am going to if council is amenable to this we're going to go out to bid next week and we're gonna say subject to funding. And if you wanna do it, why would we wait till the budget's adopted July 1st so we tell people we're gonna do it next year? If we can get it in this year, we'll do it this year. Brainerd Park, as I said, what always broke my heart when we, when we put in things over at Alcorn, we took away the basketball court. You've remedied that, we put it back. This won't be loved by all, but the council gave us instruction to proceed with the Higgins Park plan. So what we did is we didn't want those, the women's softball behind town hall here to suffer. So we've talked and we've spoken many times, well, a few times with Gina to get her input as to what they, their expectations would be. So it wouldn't be diminished, it would be a new field. It would include, we have to clear about two acres, uh, new bleachers, players bench, lighting, dugouts. Um, so it's for women's softball. Uh, there and also high school girls softball could use it. I'm sure you're gonna be hearing from Gina during deliberations, but this is our best effort to give them something that's better. Um, and also there are concerns that we hope to address being near men's softball with enforcement from our police department and making sure people at the other fields adhere to civil conduct when there will be young uh, ladies and children there now. Powder Hollow. Um, Bob Crisati approached me. He said, you know what? It really isn't right. We ha we're busing the boys, uh, you know, the high school uh, baseball team here. This is below standard. And he said, can't you look at it? Can't we make it something that's more presentable? I'm gonna talk in a minute why we have to, you know, bring them there from the high school. So we took it to heart. We did uh, undertake to look at it. And of course, both of these projects, the reason they're 689 is because that's the most we can budget uh, without a referendum. This would inc include a new warning track and home run fence, new foul poles, lighting, new fencing, new scoreboard, uh, dugout and grading. So that's what we'll do this time and then we can look next time, Bob. But I think this is a wonderful thing for men's and women's softball and baseball. Again, this is what our community wants in our town. And I was, I always like, I want to attract other families. But it's like, you know, when your bank says if you open a new bank account, we're going to give you a toaster. And your cable says if you sign up now, you're going to get HBO free for a year. What about me? I've been in the bank for 10 years. What do I get? I've had the cable. What are you going to do for me? So this is what we're going to do for the residents who live here. And hopefully it will attract others to come. Also, I should note that Enfield Little League and American Legion would be eligible to play here. This is a promise kept. This was, I, I looked to Bill Kiner and others on the council. I thank joint facilities. We've looked. This is the proposal, $610,000 for the uh, upgrade at the transfer station. We said that we would do it. We're keeping our promise. It will enhance employee productivity, safety, and uh, help 
in providing the service and we'll be looking at that as we, we go forward, but it has the proposed scale house, re relocation of the exi existing scale, water line, and a concrete pad for facility waste containers. This is something that's been on our wish list. I talked to Superintendent Dresick. What is a priority? What do you need over there at the high school? They really need, for safety reasons, uh, a new track. They also need uh, to have the uh, field um, replaced. So, the council at the last meeting made a appropriation to them that we had promised. Mr. Dresick has looked at his budget. I'm gonna, at the end, commend him because once again, he's coming without an increase in an ability to work jointly with us to provide all of these other recreational projects for the town and for those students at the school. One thing he's going to do, he believes that they will be able to contribute $300,000 towards this project uh, during the end of the year. He'll work with John Wilcox, so we'll collaboratively fund it and replace the field and the track. One of our wish lists is, uh, and I'm going to be talking to you after budget about a comprehensive field study and proposals um, to look at that and what we can do to make us really, uh, uh, really put us on the uh, map for field, soccer, uh, baseball. I I've had discussions with uh, Councilor Sakala on that. I'm excited about the future of it, but part of the problem with our fields at the high school is that they flood and there's real significant drainage issues. Um, Donald Nunes has looked and it would cost us approximately $300,000 to correct those drainage issues so those fields could be used all the time. So hopefully we'll be working collaboratively with him. And again, the federal money for COVID is to be used for sewage, uh, water, perhaps drainage might be something that also is eligible and that's on our radar. Again, the big investment now, and I, I laugh, the staff doesn't want to hear this anymore, but I say, you know, it's like you tell your, your children, you know, we're putting on a new roof, that's great, Dad. We're, we're, we're paving the driveway, that's great, Mom. You tell them you're putting a pool in the backyard, right? Bedlam, mayhem, excitement. You have to do both. So we have done that with roads. This would be the last segment of 13 to 15 uh, miles of roadway in the town. We believe the cost, and it'll be up to council to finally approve it during the public hearings and sessions this summer, between 25 and $30 million that would go to referendum this November. Roofs, we've talked about the two roofs currently under construction and being funded in the budget. Uh, Eli Whitney and Hazardville, this is what Gina and Donna talked about as concurrent paths, that we, we still had to look at the roofs now. We're hopeful that when the residents see this this uh, plan to do the roofs at the police department and these other schools and town facilities that they will support the referendum we believe it will be approximately 13 million dollars and that's due to the hard work of the joint facilities committee and public works and coming up with those numbers lastly here's the fun part we're going to put in hopefully if you approve it the one uh splash pad at parkman these are proposals and they're based on really the, f the, the water lines and infrastructure that's there because to do it other places it's cost prohibitive. But we would anticipate behind town halls we showed you there'd be another smaller splash uh, pad. There would be a 25K pool, zero entry, so access by all, uh, a shaded area. Public Works Director said he thinks that's probably 3.5 million. I didn't want us to be hamstrung until and, and, and we get the final numbers and look at it. Uh, so I said increase it to $5 million, although he, he's confident one in Chicopee was just done for $3.5 million. And then the three sp uh, splash pads, Green Manor, Hazardville, Prudence Crandall, um, are listed. And parking, the parking is behind Enfield Express. We haven't bought the building. I like doing things in phases. So we, if we do the park, we're good. If then people want the referendum or they want the pool there and they want the other amenities, then we would put in hopefully to buy Enfield Express and pay to do the parking. So it's all steps that would be taken so we don't lose any money and it's thought out, uh, I think, very carefully by Public Works and our staff. So that referendum would be a total of 4.2 to 5.7 million. This is important. CCM, town government, they're saying this is the time to go to referendum on projects uh, to take advantage of, of low interest rates, construction costs, and to reinvest. We've always done it with roads. That's why, and I commend all of those out in the public to go on the town manager website to see the road uh, uh, referendum 
uh, special that we did, bringing experts to show we have the best roads in Connecticut because council has been investing them in five-year plans uh, since 2000. And that's why our index, uh, the index for roads is zero to 100, zero being it's, it's rubble, 100 being that it's new, and we're in, around an average in town of 82. 82. That's our, our, our report card, our score. We've got to continue to invest it because we want to keep that up there. Otherwise, you know the cost of uh, repair and replacement later is exorbitantly more expensive. I um, want to remind everybody that we have, and we're close to completion now with the water pollution control uh, facility. We hope to have a, a ribbon cutting, as I said, June 18th, and that was a $36 million expenditure. Water pollution control. You want to look at the left, we say drivers, I'm giving the last two years, cost drivers, 2021, the adopted budget. You can go down, I mean, it's capital that you have to put into the plant, about a million. Interest on the bonding um, has been about 200,000 for a partial year. Personnel costs a million six. Other operating costs, 2.8 million. And that's, of course, chemicals, detergents, all of those things that cost to run it. Total in the FY 2021 budget, Five million eight hundred and forty-five thousand and forty dollars proposed twenty twenty-two. Capital is reduced by by ten thousand. Interest goes up because now the the, the bonding that we uh, uh, used in the previous slide it shows the amounts uh, is coming online. So that's going to increase by six hundred thousand a year. Personnel is going from one six to one point eight four, and I'll explain that in a minute. Other operating um, is slightly lower. So the total is 6.556309, an increase of $711,269 or 12%. Why is there an increase in personnel? Because that's really the only thing that changed other than the interest. Because we abided by the NOVAC report. The NOVAC report told us what to do at Public Works and we implemented to great savings. The NOVAC report recommended five new positions at Water Pollution Control. We wanted to wait till we got a new superintendent uh, on board, who, by the way, is doing an incredible job. And he has recommended this year. I said, well, let's walk before we want, run. We're putting in one new operator, and we'll explain at the budget one new plumber, which gives us a lot more bang for our buck and is needed. That's recommended, and that's the difference uh, in the cost this year. Um, 12.1% increase. This is what we, last year, the 2021 actual adopted budget was 39 per quarter for the base rate and 360 and 539 respectively for the volumetric charges. Our proposed budget for this year is to keep it the same, base rate of $39 per quarter, 360 and 539 respectively, zero percent increase in water pollution control. Why? We talked a little bit about in Donable, the 500,000 we received from the state. We're determining whether we're going to reduce the bond payments for that or actually put it into the plant. But also, as I said, we've had some better than expected returns. Our commitment last year and our input into water pollution control paid off. Remember, it's a work in progress. It's going to be a new plant. We're hopefully, hopefully it's going to be more efficient going forward. But happily, we can report this year, no new increase in water pollution control charges to our residents. And in closing, I would just again like to thank all of our department directors for taking their, their jobs so seriously and coming in with uh, budgets basically at zero, apart from uh, the mandatory increases of insurance and uh, collective bargaining wages, other than the three positions I talked to you about. They'll all be available to discuss their budgets, but they did a, a, a good job in keeping them level funded to allow us to invest in these other programs of CIP. I'd like to particularly thank John Wilcox, Kasha Perciello, our assistant um, director of finance, Greg Simmons, for the tremendous amount of work and hours they put in in getting these numbers to match and to even out. Um, and I'd just like to say there's going to be some interesting things we're doing to promote the town in my budget. There's some modest increases. I want to do a town-wide brochure. I want to 
talk about and share what we're doing. I want to put that brochure about all the amenities and why you should come to Enfield and all the real estate offices in the town, all the businesses, the Enfield Express, at the library, at the senior center. We want to upgrade the town website, put a small amount increase in to have a part-time webmaster come back who we had here previously to refurbish it, to make sure it's user-friendly, that people can guide through it and find information quickly and not get frustrated. I think it's imperative. You heard about the train station. I think that's an incredible plus for the future. I think it's within grasp. And uh, I want you all to know we're going to be looking at the public safety regional complex. Just let you know as a teaser, council appropriated the money to buy the adjacent seven acres. We haven't been sleeping since you did that. We hosted a joint meeting of area towns who we've gotten letters from their selectmen endorsing and supporting and wanting to use that regional facility that we're going to use because we've already put in a bond request from the state. We're hoping the state and federal government will pay the lion's share of that. Congressman Courtney is working on it. Kosh and I have talked to the U.S. Department of Transportation and Build America to see if they'll help pay for it. Uh, it's a very exciting prospect. It's going to enhance law enforcement, and it's going to address a lot of the concerns that people have uh, with EMS and law enforcement. It'll make us, again, we're already a leader in those two areas, but this will make us a real leader and partner uh, in all of Connecticut. So that's an exciting um, developing story as well. And with that, I'm done. Thank you. I mean, so we don't generally get into a lot of questions here and because the budget, budget just got present, uh, presented. So I can keep- We'll your, have the opportunity. We'll right. present for questions this Saturday. So it's, if you can- We're 8.30 here Saturday, right? Yes. 8.30. So again, if you can keep your questions general and read the budget book and be ready to go on Saturday. Yeah. Thank you. Council Spraza. So I, I don't have any questions, Chris, but I just want to tell you, um, I want to thank you and all your department heads. I know firsthand what goes into doing a budget, especially trying to come in at zero. So thank you to all the department and all the town employees. You know, a year ago, we were on the cusp of this pandemic. And there were a lot of discussions on the council about transfer stations and different projects. And I kept saying back then, I don't know what's gonna happen in the next year. It, we didn't know what was gonna happen. So we took a very conservative track. We put on hold worthy projects like the transfer station. And I am so happy this year that the year is gone. We're not out of the COVID, but we have a better sense of where we are. And this presentation, Chris, today, addresses the needs of the town in terms of infrastructure, transfer station, ambulances, things like that. But also for our residents, we're going to do more this year than we've, I've ever seen before. Potter Hollow, Brainerd Field, walking trails, splash parks. And in the end, it's gonna come in at zero. So I think it's just an extraordinary thing that happened. I'm happy that um, we were able to do that. And most of all, I love the way you did the presentation. It was very transparent. It was clear. Here's the money coming in. Here it's going out. Here's where it's going. So thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll just say we believe in that. And I think the more information the public has, the better. So we're handing out uh, two-sided form. And it's going to take basically two of the slides. We're going to distribute this at... Uh, Enfield Express, uh, the police department, all public uh, departments and town hall to show people where the money comes from and where it goes, every penny of it. So people will know where do we get it and how are we spending it. And we're going to put this out on the website and we're also going to distribute it after you uh, adopt the budget and we know the final numbers. The more the people know, the better off we all are. Councillor Mangini. Love your energy, Chris. Love it. One question I have with regards to referendum, with three potential referendum items, what if one, two, go down, will one stand? How does that work? Yeah, and we're, what we're going to do, and I'm not going to get into it because it's up to you whether you want to have one, two, or three. I'm just, this is my proposal to you. but. Very timely because we've invited and he has agreed to come at our next council meeting, Matt Ritter, our corporation council. And one of the frustrations that Walter Guzel has had and others on the council is once we start the referendum, all of a sudden it seems it comes a point where we're told, well, you can't speak, you can't talk, you can't spend money to promote it. And we're all terrified. He is the expert. He's going to come and answer that question and all the other questions that we have about what are the dates, what are the timelines, what can we say and when. How much can we spend and when? And that's an excellent point. We'll add that to the list. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Councillor Hamler. 
Um, not really a question, just a couple comments. I love the vision. I love that it's packed full of community, family, get outside, do fun stuff. Um, I also like the idea of the Enfield brochure. I mean, uh, uh, you're going to do this digitally also, right? Okay. Anyone else? Count Deputy Mayor Suzak. Okay, so this is based on the current um, valuation of all our homes. Revaluation of the homes will not kick in until the 2023 20, budget, just so everybody's clear on that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? Just two quick points, just again, great job presentation. A, remind everyone again with this, count, this council and prior councils and our working agreement with the Board of Education, they have a contingency f or, or their own contingency fund where they're allowed to keep up to 2% of their budget if they choose to. So again, we pass through the money We've kept our word with the Board of Education. It continues to work very well. Again, so I think that's just remind people they actually will be, they can sit, keep up to 2% of their budget was roughly a million something. So again, they have that same ability to manage their money as we do. That's the, the good news of that arrangement as part of this. And again, we did pass that money back to them. And if they, again, last year, I think it was two years ago, they passed through about 50 or $60,000 and that money went directly to clean up the buildings in the summer. So again, we continue to work very well with our partners on the Board of Education. And uh, you know, again, it just shows through this budget as well. Well, yeah. and, and I'd like to commend the council and the board because I, I will tell you one of the things that residents come up to me and it's most surprising is they say, we are so happy and pleased to see the cooperation between you and Mr. Dresick, and they call us the, you know, the twin Chris's and the board and the council. And it's true. It's remarkable because it, you know, other towns have a, a, a you know, a, a cordial relationship, but this is a true friendship partnership that you have and I have. And I, I talk to the superintendent almost on a daily basis. Um, we've done that. We've been forged a lot of our decisions because of COVID working together from inoculations to having to do custodial. I cannot tell you what a wonderful partner he is. The board supports him, you support me, and it is all to the benefit of our residents. And that's what people want to see in town government. They want to see people work together and put everything else aside. And I think, boy, it, it, it's been working. I am prayerful it will continue. Like to see that in all government, actually, not just town government. Well, and I think we yeah. do that. I think this council does a great job doing that. We have different times. We have different issues and different constituents. But I think at the end of the day, um, and your support of this budget, we that's what we all care about. And we have to articulate our differences, too. But we do it civilly, and we move on together as a council. And I think you've all done a great job doing that, past and present, and I thank you all. I couldn't do my job, and staff couldn't. And I will tell you, people recognize it. Three years ago, it was a little different. And now people watch our meetings and our staff and others, and I have had people say, boy, I wish my town got along that well. I wish my council did those kind of things. It, I just have to tell you, because I'm leaving and I can, uh, we're a very unique and remarkable town. You know, and on that note too, I think you, you touched on it. Last year, the council, including former council, councilor uh, Kiner, raised the, uh, you know, understood the, the, the multi-year project to get the water pollution control back to a, f a level where we could fund it, feel confident that it wouldn't be in a deficit situation. We took what was five years ago, I believe, close to a $6 million deficit in that fund Council did their, all members of the council voted for that last year, you know, and now once that plant, where people got to realize once that plan is open and now it, hopefully we can manage it the way it's supposed to be managed, that we're going to have the opportunity to help our neighbors who may look to us because of the capacity of that plant. And I know that, you know, people don't think of it this way, but we could actually help a, we could get money from other towns to, f to help them with their, with their water pollution control. And because of the capacity level of that plant now, people don't realize we're going to be able to have, if, if it becomes whatever happens with the state, you know, MDC, all the things that are going on, we now have put ourselves in a position where we can be a provider to other towns and collect tax dollars so it doesn't have to ask our local tax payers to fund everything. I mean, that's the vision that the, the entire council, to your point, both Democrat and Republicans took, la oh, really over the last four years, but really last year, even through a difficult year, that we needed to make sure that that, fun that, that was funded correctly, or appropriately is maybe a better word. And, you know, and that's, that, that's those things happen, and you take some, make some tough choices. But now once that plan opens, we hopefully could be in a position where some of the vision of doing some regional services comes to fruition. 
So I think you know, that's the other thing that people need to realize that part of the, what, where we're at with the water pollution control is really important. And I think it's, it's, I know it's not gonna get the need that it, you know, but it's, it's really important through this budget because it puts us in a position where other towns, and if you've seen what the MDC has done to some of those towns, those are huge increases, huge. And we're hopefully going to be able to be on the other side where we can manage that, not only for our own residents, but for maybe our neighbors who have the desire that they don't want that cost anymore. So that's the vision with that plan opening in June, which I think is a great way to kind of segue with your presentation of all the other good things that are going on. I know it's not maybe um, glamorous to talk about sewage and other appropriate words, but it's a big part of what we do. And, uh, you know, and, and I think and, and the, really the last piece is the NOVAC, NOVAC report, which I know started councils prior to, you know, sort of this, is that we actually took that, everyone says you spend money in a report, you never in, implement it. Well, we're implementing it. So, really, I mean, those little things really do matter. So thank you, sir, and I'm looking forward to Saturday. Akash, I just wanna make sure you know you, put, you have the floor. If you have any comments or questions, you're more than welcome. Anyone have any other questions for the town manager? And I think maybe if the splash park goes in, you could be the first person to run through those little <laughs> lily pads, okay? I nominate, all right, so we got a second, we're good. Thank you, sir. Moving on to item 10, town attorney report. Attorney Talberg. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be brief because uh, you still have a lot of items on your agenda, but I have good news. I'm, I'm happy to report uh, with regard to outdoor dining. Councillor Bosco, you had asked a couple of weeks ago about um, what would happen when the executive orders expire, and I think our prediction was that the governor would probably step in or the legislature. And, in fact, a remarkable thing happened in Hartford last week. On March 30th, the Senate unanimously uh, approved House uh, Senate Bill uh, 6610, the House unanimously approved it, 141 to 0, and the governor signed it on March 31, essentially extending the outdoor dining for another year until March of uh, 2022. And so the highlights um, are that uh, we have the continued uh, no fee to the municipality, so uh, there's, there's that, um, but it is essentially an expedited review process um, for uh, the continuation of outdoor dining. It removes the local um, minimum off-street parking requirements, and it just relaxes the requirements in a number of other ways. So locally, uh, what the town planning office did was they had prepared a two-page uh, application that kind of simplifies the process. Instead of needing to bring in experts and soil scientists and traffic engineers, you basically need a basic site plan sketch and a statement of your purpose. And if you already have this ex accessory use, you're essentially good to go to continue it. Um, town staff reports, I think there were 16 establishments in Enfield that took advantage of it, two that applied and then didn't follow up, a few more are in the process right now. So it's a very easy, uh, accessible process. It will be in place for another year. Who knows what's gonna happen after that, but uh, anybody with questions about that should go right to the uh, land use office and the ZEO, Rick Rochelle, would be happy to help out with that. So that problem is resolved, good news. And then um, quickly before I close, uh, there was a question that arose about the rails to trails. And so um, we did research and we have copies of the old uh, agreements between the state of Connecticut and a rail operator. And it does appear that those agreements expired. So it is interesting that there's some activity out there. But in terms of the legal um, concept of standing, the town doesn't have legal standing to step in and prevent that. And so for example, Connecticut general statutes uh, Section 13B-36 allows the state to enter into these agreements and not even have to ask a lo local municipality. They don't have to have a hearing. They don't have to, have to have a process. So there's been some talk about a reestablishment of a freight line. They wouldn't necessarily have to come to us for that. Um, and we wouldn't have a say in the legal sense. Now, that wouldn't prevent the town from expressing its desire. And so one option you have is what our friends in East Windsor did. I think this was circulated to everybody March 30, 2021, the first selectman of East Windsor uh, prepared a letter expressing that town's position 
that they strongly support converting the rail line to a rails to trail venue. Uh, that would certainly be your prerogative to take action on that, and you could direct you could address it to whom it may concern, as East Windsor did, or you could be a little more aggressive and go to the folks that you're working with at the um, Department of Transportation. That's your option, and that would be for your uh, caucuses to consider, perhaps for whenever you thought that was appropriate. Any questions for the town attorney? Councilor Sraza. Mr. Talbert, in essence, because it's the decision is with the state of Connecticut, we could write all the letters and all the resolutions. They're going to decide what's going to happen. That's, that's absolutely correct. So other than maybe feel good, the resolution has no legal authority to compel anybody to do anything. That is correct. So, so I think, to be clear, though, that may be true, but we actually made a council vote to support the South River Street Bridge, which we didn't have to do. Yes, they were matching money. So I think we should consider a resolution. Whether it goes on deaf ears, it goes on deaf ears. But to sit there and say that we're not going to make a comment when there could be freight trains going through people's backyards, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a comment. So whether it goes on deaf ears or not, so be it. But that's why I, I also think we should invite Councillor Hall here for the next meeting to give some ba background on that. And I agree, I would like to see something similar to East Windsor did. East Long Meadow is at, talking about expanding their line to our border. East Windsor, which was again our southern, our southern neighbors with all that walking area they have, we need to step up to the plate if we truly believe in outdoor environmental activity in this town, especially in that section of town that is, again, I'm sorry to keep using the word beautiful, but in my opinion, that is a beautiful section of town that um, I don't want to see freight cars, whatever they're uh, you know, delivering. And again, the individuals had 25 years to do something with that, that train rail. I've, I'm, I've stupidly have walked it to go take a look for myself. And I'm telling you, there's some that, that's in, it's not happening tomorrow. Even if he started replacing those rails, they're in tough shape. And again, maybe they're doing, to Joey's point, making some work where people can see it off a of Hazard Ave. But I'm sorry. I mean, I, in my opinion, this is a must-have for us. The other towns have done it. I think Simsbury is one town, for example, where they've converted their rails to trails. I know there's others, and we'll do some research, and we'll have it for the next meeting. So this is not just you know an Enfield issue. There's other town, towns, you know, doing it. This is a, bi bi in my opinion, a bipartisan effort. We have the senator of South Windsor, who's not a Republican; he's a Democrat. We have the first select person of East Windsor, who again is a Democrat. We have Democrats in East and East Long Meadow who are thrilled that we may consider doing this. So this is a bipartisan, pro-environment, pro-family, pro-get outside, and again, it's happening all over the country. We don't have the benefit of open space as some of our partners out in the western part of the country do, but man, we can sure f do something here instead of waiting more years. Where, quite frankly, if it wasn't a rail line, we would be blight. We'd be issuing it some blight um, violations. So, I mean, those are things for me personally. This is, I'm going to be passionate about this, and I'm looking forward to actually. I, I, I'm sorry, I'll get to you one second. And so I appreciate your update, but I'm, I'm hoping that we can talk at leadership to have our own resolution for when counts, and we invite Councillor Harrell for our next meeting. So thank you. You'd Council be well Mangini, within your rights to do that, yes, yep. Mr. Councilor Mangini, I apologize. Go right ahead. No, no, and I, and I have to agree with you 110 percent, um, <clears throat> Mayor Mike. That rail issue has always been stuck in my craw for a long, long time. And Mr. Bromson, I think you're aware of my position. Um, it's a public safety matter from my standpoint. You've got the Hazard uh, Avenue, you've got the North Road. We have school buses, you know, you have cars, you have kids on bikes. This is a safety issue. Aesthetics, you know, is wonderful and, and pretty and all that good stuff, but we're talking about safety, people's safety. And that, to me, is, is a real concern. And I've been raising this issue when I was in the council prior, never got any straight answer from anybody from anywhere. And I, I like the idea of a, a, a letter of support, uh, you know, from our council. Um, but I think we need to go farther, maybe, and, and push a little bit and, and make the position that it is a safety concern. 
And I know, Chris, you remember when we had that issue with the prison where we got a little bit upset with the state of Connecticut and we said, okay, if you're gonna make us do this, we're just gonna shut off the faucets and you can't use the toilets. I mean, it didn't happen, but we made that stand. So Mayor Mike, you know, you are correct if you, um, you know, have have an issue that you need to take a position on, then so be it. Right. And I think this is one that we should. I apologize for not calling you earlier, but I appreciate, uh, but I appreciate your patience. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Councilor Muller. I agree with you guys as well. We should have a resolution. That this is going right through my backyard as well. I spoke to some of the residents as well on Westerly, and, and they don't support it as well. And they were shocked to see the work going on as well and not knowing about it. So I would support a resolution I recommend as well. Anyone taking a ride if you haven't been out in that section of town, there is actually they've cleared out a complete backyard of the people who live on the top of Westerly Drive. So there's been, you know, I think the Councillor Bosco's point has been where you drive by, you can see it. I, again, I, I, I may be a little bit naive, but every level of government should be letting us know when work's going on in our town. And by the Whether solar you can array. Stop it or not, no worries. But the courtesy should have been made to to to, our, to you as Lisa, the manager. They don't have to let us know, but they certainly should have let your office know, in my opinion. And you'll see some more work by the solar array as well. You'll see. Yeah. Councillor Bosco. The only place he does work is where he can get the people that need to do the crossing money from him. So what he does is, when when someone has a piece of property that has to cross the tracks, he holds them up for money to do a crossing, and that's the only work he's done is where other people's property was to get a crossing or where it's visible. And, you know, whatever we have to do to make this right, I mean, you know, like, like Cindy said, safety, uh, aesthetics, I mean, our community, you're gonna run freight trains through our residential areas, so whatever we can do, at least we're not going down, not fighting. And I recommend you go drive in Abbeywood and see how close that would be going through uh, Abbeywood. Yep. And there's no crossing there as well. There's no crossing, no red light flashing, nothing. Any other questions for the town attorney? Thank you, sir, as always. Any other questions? Thank you. Moving on to item 11, any reports of special committees of the council? Councilor Muller. I had an update from the JFK Building Committee from April 1st. Uh, Milton Beebe's working to prep the backfields in the new walk areas and pathways. There's some good pictures on the JFK website. Uh, the cafeteria space is active. The ceiling grid is gone in. They're finished taping and they're painting as well. The auditorium in the lobby area, the MEP work is done. They're doing the ceiling work. They're framing and drywalling the ceiling, certain sections of it. And I want to remind all the residents that this auditorium can hold 700 people at one time. Uh, the exterior of the auditorium is about 95% complete. Uh, they'll be installing the panel system shortly. It's a fiber cement panel we should see on the outside shortly. Uh, the band room, they sprayed soundproof for the ceiling. The art room, the ceiling grid's up, the floor is done, and the millwork is ongoing. Uh, the white wing interior, uh, the demo's about 95% complete. On um, the exterior, you'll see the new window sills going in and then the new windows. Uh, the abatement of white wing is 100% uh, complete. They finished all that. And good news from the chairman that they're on schedule and under budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, uh, reports of special committees by the town council? Hearing none, we move on to uh, 12, item 12, old business on the page one. Item A, appointments A1, there are none. On page two, appointments two through 14, again, there are none. Top of page three, under old business, appointments 15 and 16, there are none. Under appointments from the town manager, uh, so I know are we appointing the fair councilor Mangini? Yes, and number 12 on page four. Okay, so on page three, items one through 11, there are none. On the top of page four for the fair rent, um, item 12, fair rent commission, do I have a motion to remove from the table? So moved. By councilor, second. councilor Sakala, second, excuse me, by Deputy Mayor Suzak, second by councilor Sakala. All those in favor of removing from them? Those opposed? 11 in favor, Sheila, zero against. So Chris, this is a town manager appointment. Do you have to physically make the, or do, can we do as normal? I don't know, I've never done one. I know. Well, um, I if, I, 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 know. if I could just interject. Go right ahead. 
is isn't it um, council appoint town manager approved? So we would make the appointment. Yeah, and that, yeah. Town is that a right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't have that authority. Thank you, Gina. So you, you, so you have you, you just want to make the recommendation, Bad. Chris, and then we'll approve it. Sure. So item 12, Fair Rent Commission. Um, sir, is there a nomination, please? There is, but I don't have the name. So Jeff if you Gentis. want to give it to me. <laughs> Jeff Gentis. Jeff Gentis. Jeff Gentis. Correct. Attorney Jeff Gentis. Motion made by the town manager appoint Jeff Gentis, if I say it correctly, and I apologize I don't. Do I have, so he has made the appointment. Now do I have a motion to approve? Motion to by Council Mangini, second by Council Zakala. Do I have a motion to close nominations? Don't we don't move. need to do that. Okay. Don't. All right. So we have a motion made, second in. I have to admit, it's been a while since I've done one of these. And so, the, any discussion on the motion? Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Riley, four. Councilor Safraza, four. Deputy yeah. Mayor Suzak, four. Yeah, um, Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Jeff Gentis. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Jeff Gentis. Councillor Muller? Four. That's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Um, so items 13 through 16 remain on the table. Item C under old business, appointments by PNZ Commission appointed council approved, there are none. Item D, discussion resolution, the MOU with the fire district remains on the table. Item 13, new business. Item A, consent agenda, again, there is none. Under new business, item B, appointments by the town council, there are none. Item C under new business, appointments by the town manager, there are none. Item 13, new business, item D, uh, appointments under the PNZ commission appointed, council approved, there are none. We move to item, item 14, items for discussion. Items A, one and two have been moved to, moved to miscellaneous. Item B, appointments, town council appointed, there are none. Item C, appointments, uh, town manager appointed, council approved, again, there are none. Items one, two, three, and four are current resignations, so they stay on the table. They will move to new business um, next meeting. Item D, appointments, PNZ Commission appointed, council approved. Again, there are none. E, F, G, H, I, J, and K have been moved to miscellaneous. And now we move to uh, miscellaneous, item 15. The first two on the consent agenda, items A1 and A2. One is, again, to uh, have the manager sign a Metro Service Agreement, which is a, our annual you know, DUI checkpoint. And the other is a grant, continued grant to uh, for the clerk to continue to upgrade our um, our uh, our vision sy systems to have things online. Any discussion on the uh, consent agenda? Hearing none, by show of hands, all those approved. Approved, excuse me. Opposed, abstentions. Eleven in fa favor, Sheila, and zero against on the account on the consent agenda. We move to item E, which is the uh, under miscellaneous, which is. The discussion resolution resolution authorizing the town manager to sign agreement with Enfield Lowe's and Fishes to, for installation of an outdoor security system. Whereas the Enfield Lowe's and Fishes Inc. is seeking financial assistance from the town of Enfield to purchase and install an outdoor security system at their property located at 23 North Maple Street. Whereas the town of Enfield intends to utilize community development grant development block grant program and income funding in an amount of five thousand dollars support Enfield Lowe's and Fishes Inc. Now therefore be it resolved the town manager is authorized to sign the agreement between the town of Enfield and Enfield Lowe's and Fishes Inc. subject to review and approval by the town attorney submitted on by Nelson Teresso director deputy director of economic development on March 26 2021. So moved. By Councilor Mangini seconded by Councilor Muller. Pretty straightforward, but if it, I, yeah. it is straightforward. They reached out, and uh, Nelson was able to find this funding. Um, Kasha is available to pinch it for Nelson if there are any questions. Kasha and Nelson just want to make sure you have a chance to speak. Anything you guys want to add? Kasha first, then Nelson. Uh, Mayor Nelson is actually not on tonight. Yeah. Um, I really don't have uh, too much to add. Nelson uh, did the legwork on this one. He did approach uh, PDBG. They uh, told him it's okay to use up to five thousand dollars. For this program um, to accomplish this, to get the security cameras for uh, their new Lowe's and Fishes new 23 North Main Street location. Um, that's uh, really, I'm available for any questions or to pass them along if I need to. Thank you, Kasha. Councillor Bosco. 
are uh, these cameras outside cameras? And if so, are we gonna have access to them to add to our other cameras in that area? Don't look at so me. So uh, uh, I defer one second, to Councilor Bosco is okay. She, yes. Councilor Hamley, you have the floor. Um, I spoke to um, the director at uh, Loaves and Fishes, and yes, the police will have access. And I'm gonna make sure I bring them the form so that they make sure it gets signed. Excellent question. You have the floor, Councilor Bosco. All set? Anyone else have any questions or comments? Kasha, anything else? Nope, nothing to add. Thank you. Right. Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Suprazi? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzette? Four. Councilor Ungeyer? Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. Councilor Crisotti? Four. Councilor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. The 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item F. Discussion resolution under miscellaneous resolution to adopt proposed amendment to the Enfield tax incentive excuse me, tax increment financing policy with regards to the structure of the TIF Advisory Committee. Whereas the Enfield Town Council adopted the Midtown Enfield Tax Increment Financing Master Plan, also known as the Master Plan, on June 3rd, 2019. Whereas the Master Plan's original assessed value, or OAV, as of June 3rd, 2019, was subs subsequently reduced to the stipulated court order. And whereas the reduced OAV will afford more opportunity, do I have the, uh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong one, apologize. Okay, sorry, let me start again. Whereas the Enfield Town Council adopted the town, town of Enfield Town, the tax increment finance pol financing, also known as TIF policy, on June 3rd, 2019. Whereas the TIF policy provides for the designation of nine person TIF advisory committee. Whereas the Town Council wishes to modify the TIF policy as to the membership of the TIF advisory committee. Whereas the public hearing was held on April 5th, 2021 regarding the proposed modification of the TIF policy. Now therefore be it resolved that the TIF policy's position as of the TIF advisory committee's membership is modified as follows. The TIF advisory committee shall consist of five people appointed by the town council and shall consist of two members of the town council, one member each of the economic development commission, the Cons conservation commission and the planning and zoning commission, the director of development services, the director of finance, the supervisor of of assessment and revenue collection will act as staff liaison to the TIF Advisory Committee. Motion to approve. So Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Riley. Again, this is what we had the public hearing on. Uh, I think Lori gave a very good explanation, basically saying that the staff aren't voting members. Right, housekeeping. Yep. It was housekeeping. Housekeeping, yep, sorry. Yep. Any questions? I apologize for reading the initial wrong resolution. Hearing none, roll call please, Sheila. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Safraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Sousa? Four. Councilor Angayer? Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. Councilor Crisotti? Four. Councilor Hamler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Moving on to item G, discussion resolution. Resolution to set a public hearing to amend the town council, the town of Enfield tax increment financing, also known as TIF, Midtown Master Plan, relative to the original assessed value OAV of the TIF area and associated exhibits. Whereas the Enfield Town Council adopted the Enfield Midtown Enfield tax increment financing master plan, also known as the master plan, on June 3rd, 2019. Whereas the master plan's original assessed value, or OAV, as of June 3rd, 2019, was sub subsequently reduced due to stipulated court order. And whereas the reduced OAV will afford more opportunity to collect money for the TIF from the captured added, added value, and whereas the master plan requires a public hearing for any modifications thereto, be it further resolved that the uh, Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, April 15, 2021, at 6.50 p.m. to allow interested residents an opportunity to express their opinion regarding the proposed modification to the Midtown Enfield Tax Increment Financer, Financing Master Plan's original assessed value. So moved. By Co yes. Councilor Muller, seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Suzak. So actually, this is the correct pub date. So uh, it's funny, we, I think you brought up the question in, in Councilor, or 
this is actually the public hearing to, to modify the the uh, the OAV. So it's going to be on a 15th. So it's actually yeah. correct. It's a second. Yeah, it's the second part of this. It's another public hearing. Okay. Yeah. So. Then if I'm understanding this correctly, at our next council meeting, we are having a public hearing to allow residents to speak. Right, just like we did today. But this will be, Chris, I mean, I don't know if you want to, if quick on the OAV, this was because of the, the mall got reevaluated. Yeah, well, uh, just very briefly, uh, again, this is important that we, we were, this is something that had languished, up, you know, a couple, of, two and a half years ago. There was a big push uh, to get the TIF district. Um, I, I'd like to recognize Marian Turner. She was the big, the bird in my ear saying, we've got to do TIF, we've got to do TIF. And there really wasn't much going on. But if we hadn't done it then, look at these numbers. And what TIF really is, the tax incremental financing agreement, I'll give a thumbnail. You set, we drew an area around which included the square. And you set a value what the grand list is when we adopted it. For the square at that time, it was 175 million. Well, we had a tax appeal, and everybody thought it was doom and gloom, and the press loves to read about it. Oh, look, there was a tax appeal. They lost taxes. Yes, have patience. And we had to assess it. Then it went down to 165. We want to now go back and change the TIF to say it isn't 175. It actually, after the tax abatement, it went through in court. We adopted it was 165 million. Why is that $10 million important? Because when you set the base for the TIF, as the grand list grows, as times get better, as they have, as they've sold off property now and the value of the individual parses has skyrocketed, so were their evaluations. What is the TIF district? I will remind our, our viewers at home. The TIF district now, we set the base, and any increase in that each year that goes up in the grand list, 50 percent goes into the town coffers to pay our, our budget for the whole town. 50 percent goes into the TIF fund. And why is that important? Because that money is to be used within the TIF to enhance it and develop it. Do we need a parking garage? We have the money to do it. Do we have new lighting? We have the money to do it. By doing this action, that $10 million, this is the difference. The money captured to go into the TIF fund would have been zero. By making this amendment for 2021, the money now uh, for 2020 alone Will, will be 170 or uh, would have been zero. It's now going to be $53,000 we'll put in. And for this year, we would have captured, if we didn't change it, 170,000. And by making this change, we're going to put 337,000 into it. Now we're talking real money, folks. So we'll have the TIF committee, and that's <clears> what we're <throat> talking about, the voting and whatnot. They'll start to meet, and then they will get requests from developers and to say, what can we do? And it also includes... Thompsonville. We drew ours large enough to be Enfield Square and the Thompsonville area. Now we're going to have almost $380,000, $390,000, which is specifically to be spent in those areas to enhance public development. Again, luck favors the prepared. Who would have thought that uh, the, the mall at the time, we thought it was doom and gloom and it was going to be the end of the world and they were bad people and now we find out they're great partners and by distributing and selling the property individually, the values have gone up and so are our tax rolls and so will the money in the TIF district and we'll be able to put <coughs> that money back to use. You want to add anything, Lori, briefly? Because the hour is late. That, that, that was, was uh, perfect. The, the only thing, thing I want, want to say is, say is I believe that there's a typo, typo that, that your next, next meeting is on the 19th, 19th and not the 15th. Oh, you had to throw that in and start Cindy, that over. Right. You were Cindy, right. I, yes. Cindy was <laughs> darned and determined to be uh, able to. Yeah, every now and then I get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you were persistent. So, I, Cindy, you still have the floor. I, Go right I ahead. do have a question, though. Thank you, Chris, for your overview. This was not when I was on the council, so this is new to me. Right. But the question that I have. Um, the prior resolution uh, sets the committee, the number of members. When does council or does town manager assign these members? You keep in mind to give me all this authority, but you can see how I bumbled the last one. So, no, this is the council will appoint them. Okay. And uh, once we make the changes, Lori shaking her head, we'll come forward. This is going to be a very important committee because they're gonna make expenditures and, and investments in a very important economic development project. So it, right. it really is important that we did it. So at the next council meeting, we're gonna have the public hearing and we'll have more discussion on this? Correct. Okay, yep. good, thank you. No, no. So, so since you have the floor, you wanna make the, that, um, that amendment to change the, the um, 15 to 19? Correct. Yep. So amendment to change the date from April 15th to April 19th been made by Councillor Mangini. Is there a second? Second. By Councillor Riley. Any discussion on the amendment to change it to the 19th? That's our next council meeting. 
Hearing none, by show of hands to approve the amendment. All by show of hands. Opposed, abstention, 10 in favor, Sheila, zero against. Any other questions on the main motion on, on the setting of the, of the TIF? Any other questions? Thank you, Lori. Yeah, I, my only, Lori, I just have a statement. Again, I, I, you know, I have a kind of a little bit of a pet project. Hopefully this will help us get the trolleys for the Christmas season through town because when people come to shop in town, you need to do something. We need to be different than Manchester and Holyoke. And I, you know, I endorse having some trolleys for the Christmas season. Tell it to the committee, Mr. Yes. Mayor. Yep. Uh, you create, the, create the committee and then you can tell it to yeah. them. So, Lori, I appreciate <laughs> you listening. Uh, any other questions? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Safaza. Four. Deputy Mayor Shuzak. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. That's 11 in favor, uh, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move to item H under miscellaneous. Discussion resolution, a resolution to approve proposed pay rates for summer, seasonal, and temporary employees in Recreation Division, effective August 1st, 2021. Resolved in accordance with Chapter 5, Section 14 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the pay rates for summer, seasonal, and temporary employees in the Recreation Division, effective August 1st, 2021, as set forth in Schedule, attached Schedule A, submitted on April 5th, 2021, by Steve Blind, our Director of Human Resources. So moved. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Mangini. Fairly straightforward, I don't know, I mean, yeah, I think we do this every year pretty much. It is, yeah. um, we have Mary Keller is supposed to be on, I, everybody's hidden if there were questions, but yes, we do it every year and it's been approved by, she is there, uh, by Steve Belinda. Welcome, Mary, I mean, since you joined, any you have the floor, any comments or questions? It's pretty straightforward, it's something we do every year, minimum wage goes up again August 1st, it will account for wage compression, um, our ability to attract and maintain qualified seasonal staff. It's comparable with other municipalities. And as always, recreation program revenue will cover the cost of the wage increases. Yep. Thank you. And what, what I'd like to say, Mr. Mayor, I think it's apropos uh, that Mary, this is gonna be a segue. This will probably be her last formal uh, item on the agenda from recreation. I'd like you to join me in welcoming her as our new senior center manager and she'll be addressing the next item she will always be there as a source of uh, support and historical knowledge for allison but she will be now making the the change over to lead us and and the senior center i have to tell you i've gone over to visit her a couple of times the staff is happy uh, i think she's going to do great things there and i'll tell you we have the most wonderful senior center in the state and when you walk in now and i mean this i look at mary she's like the quintessential person to be a senior center a manager and director. I know she's going to do great. She has patience. She's been an employee for 22 years. Oh. She's done great things for us, and I really have high expectations for her in this post going forward. So as we phase out recreation, Mary, we welcome you to the Senior Center. Any questions or comments for Mary? Councillor Riley. Yeah, I just had um, one question. Um, when I was looking at all of the positions, and I had it in the back of my head that I thought that and it could be included in here under lifeguard because it doesn't say how many or whatever, but I just wanted to make sure that it included the lifeguard that I thought we talked about for the boats, the pond over there. I'm sorry to say, oh. sadly, <laughs> And some people aren't as disappointed as I am, but I know the mayor is. Two of the things, I mean, we had trains, trolleys, and we were gonna have uh, um, paddle boats. Um, it was delayed this year, the permitting with DEEP to actually do the, the, the spillway. But beyond that, uh, the contractors have gotten cold feet. They're afraid and they're saying, well, we would need a, uh, and they're not willing to do it. We'd have to go national, get somebody to do a study of the tide of the, you know, of the fresh water pulling people. So I think we may have to abandon it for safety and cost. It was a uh, worthy effort, but I don't think we're gonna be able to bring that one in. So that won't be an issue. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I mean, I'm a paddleboat guy. I mean, Councillor Crisotti. Yeah, uh, this is to Mary. Mary, congratulations on your new position. And uh, 
thank you for your years of service over at the rec department. Uh, you did a fantastic job. I know you're going to do very well over at the senior center and looking forward to uh, working with you on the commission on aging. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. You're welcome. Hey, Mary, one parting uh, recreational question. Hopefully we are going to have the chess club back at some point. Again, a great, <laughs> great idea. Yeah. And every child should learn how to play chess. So I, hopefully that's coming back. I don't want to put you on the spot, but if it, hopefully we get as we get opened up, we can do it outdoors in the summer. So I will relay that on. Please, to Allison. Mary, Mary's gonna say if it comes back, Mayor, she gets credit. If it doesn't, that's play all right. Allison. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> and a polo team. Remember what we talked about? Yes. Well, thank you for hanging in there. I know it's getting late. Um, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor, Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. The 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item I on discussion resolution. Resolution adopting new senior center program assistant job description uh sorry just had it what we'll resolve that in accordance with chapter 7 section 2 of the town charter the enfield town council does hereby adopt the new job description for the position of the senior center program assistant submitted on april 5th 2021 by steve belinda our human resource director so moved by councillor muller second. second by councillor riley um, I think uh, Mary is up on this one as well, right? I mean, I don't know if you want to segue, but if not, Mary, you have the floor. You're welcome to uh, uh, make a comment on the uh, updated job description. Thank, Thank you. you. We are looking to um, transition from a facility assistant to a program assistant, which would give us more flexibility in doing more programming instead of them just limited to moving furniture and, and the basics that were in the original job description allow us to do more specifically with customer service at the front desk. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Mary? And not to reiterate this point, but this is one of the things I think this council and your staff has done. We have re-looked at every job description and it's and we've done it for three or four years straight. And it's the reason why we've been able to be flexible, keep talented people, we've looked to do things differently as opposed to here's your job description that's the way you do for the next 50 years and this is the note again when we do these it it still brings me back and we started this about four years ago it's really very innovative in the public sector you know, that, you know again willing to, to look at changing someone's job description to again to serve the people who are asking for the services that whatever they may be at that time so again I think this is just another really solid way of just continuing to look at how we run our organization so, Mary, thank you. Roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sopraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Souza. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller? Four. That's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Mary. Moving on to item J, discussion resolution, resolution setting a public hearing for the 21, 21, two, excuse me, 2021-2022 budget. Whereas the town council of the town of Enfield values the opinions and comments of its constituents. Whereas in accordance with chapter six, Section four of the Enfield Town Charter, any elector or taxpayer may have an opportunity to be heard regarding appropriations for the ensuing fiscal year and for the purpose of being heard on issues of vital community importance and concern. And whereas the town council shall conduct a virtual public hearing Wednesday, April 14th, 2020 at 5 p.m. That will be available for viewing on YouTube. And whereas due to the public health emergency, the public comments will be taken by written testimony only. And electors or taxpayers may submit written testimony starting their name and address, excuse me, stating their name and address to PH 
budget commons at enfield.org by 5 o'clock on Monday, April 12, 2021, whereas all public comments received by the Enfield electors or taxpayers will be posted to a link provided at the town's website at least 24 hours prior to the public hearing. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in accordance of that in the order of business of the 2021-2022 budget hearing will be arranged as follows. Mayor, number one, mayor will recite the gross number of public comments received, memorializing the fact that they were received by email in accordance with the procedures provided by Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B issued March 14, 2020, and Executive Order 7I issued March 21, 2021. Mayor will also confirm receipt and review of these public comments by each town councilor as part of the budget deliberation. And number three, after the document receipt and review of public comment, the record the record for the public hearing will be closed and the council's budget deliberation should proceed forthwith. Permitted on March 31st, 2020 by the town manager's office. So moved. By Councillor by Councillor um, Muller, Muller, seconded by Councillor Mangini. Uh, pretty, I don't know, pretty straightforward. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Surprise. Four. Deputy Mayor Souza. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Moving on to item K under miscellaneous. Discussion resolution resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the National Railroad Passenger Corporation licensing, license agreement. Resolved that the town manager, Christopher Delbert Bronson, is authorized to sign the license agreement by, by and between the town of Enfield and the National Railroad Passenger Corporation, subject to review and approval by the town attorney in a name on behalf of the town of Enfield, submitted by the town attorney's office on March 29th, 2021. So moved. Councilor Muller. Stand by Councilor Riley. I know, I'm sure I'm going to defer yeah. uh, it to the town term, but it's very simple. Basically, as we talked about, we, we've made a $36 million investment to the Water Pollution Control Center, uh, DEEP, Department of Environmental Protection, wanted to protect that investment against raining and flooding, so they asked us to place a berm above. So if we did have a 100-year flood or something of that sort, it would protect and divert it away. So we had to work with Amtrak because to place the berm, it is on within their right of way. So we negotiated that with them for the purpose of going on and constructing the berm. And with that, I defer the actual licensing agreement um, to the town attorney. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Chris. So uh, just for the clarity of the record, the National uh, pa Railroad Passenger uh, Corporation is Amtrak, and this is the issue we uh, addressed in executive session. This relates to the uh, license agreement at 90 Parsons Road, the water pollution control facility. The licensing agreement had been vetted by our outside counsel at Shipman and Goodwin and negotiated for the past several years. We finally have it to completion and we're very eager to uh, have it executed so we can finish that last piece of the puzzle and have the uh, sheet pile berm installed so that we can have the ribbon cutting and have this project officially completed hopefully by June. Thank you, Attorney Talberg. Any questions for town manager or town attorney? Just real, just maybe roughly one of you guys just let people know how many hours that the staff has worked. I mean, I know you don't know off the top of your head, but well, I, I mean, I, I, be, I you don't get the sense of how how much you folks have put in this. Well, it was a um, considered effort uh, to work with Amtrak, but. As I say, I'm looking forward to our new train station, and Amtrak is going to be our partner. So as far as I'm concerned, thank you, and all aboard Amtrak. Well said. <laughs> Happy to close the file and put it away. <laughs> lots and lots of paper. That's all I'll say. Roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Surprise. Four. Deputy Mayor Souza. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Cassati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Eleven in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item 16, public communications. Would anyone like to speak for the public? You got three minutes. Yes, sir. Just name and address for the record.
Walter, Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. A little history lesson, and I know Councilor Bosco and Councilor Mangini, I think, were on the council at that time. I sent a request into Mayor Copin to get the people down here for the, for the railroad through uh, Skidico and Hazardville and all that. About 12 years ago, they sat here, and they literally lied to all of you, to, to that council at that time. They lied. They said they were going to transfer freight from, from the tracks over at, by the river to those tracks. They were going to rip up the, the new uh, bike path in East Longmeadow, bring it up through Springfields, and then reconnect it back up. They, were, they, were, they had a contract to bring French fries to McDonald's, which I don't think they brought one fry yet. So McDonald's is still holding their hands, waiting for, I'm talking about Martin, Martin uh, Brower, is still waiting for their French fries. So they just literally lied. And, and like, like uh, Councilor Bosco said, I think they get together on a Saturday, Sunday, they get a case of beer and they work out there to show that they're working. That's, I drive by there and I've seen it for 15 year, 20, 15 years at least. And they put a couple ties in and a couple rails in and I go, okay, we got that. And, and the case of beer ends and they stop working. So it's just a little history lesson on that. So I'm glad that that's going forward. And uh, thank you, Mr. Bromson, for the great budget presentation, being very transparent and clear to everyone. And that's all I have to say. So a little history lesson for you all. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Lucian LaFay, 54 Kimberly Drive. It's on. OK, good. Uh, and also the uh, vice chairman of the Enfield Veterans Council. One thing I failed to mention earlier, along with the parade, I just want the people in town to know that all the cemeteries in town will be flagged the week prior to the parade. And without the help of the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, the veterans organizations wouldn't be able to accomplish that in a timely manner as there's well over 5,000 flags that go out in those cemeteries. So I just want to give publicly a thank you to the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts that helped the veterans organizations to flag those cemeteries. And the other thing is for the public to realize that the morning of the parade, post 80 and post 154, the American Legion, we go out and do a short ceremony in all those cemeteries in town prior to the parade. So that, that's all I wanted to just put out. And again, a big thank you to Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts in town here for the help they give us in flagging the cemeteries to honor our veterans. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak for, from the public for the council? Anyone else for first time? Second time? Declare public communications closed. <coughs> Item 17, councilor any councilor communications? I just want to say real quick to uh, Lucian LaFay, our veterans council, uh, I always get your title wrong, vice chairman. Vice chairman. It's just so people understand, I won't get into details, but there's an issue about getting vaccines to homebound veterans. I call Lucian. Um, again, the amount of work the guy puts in out of his own time, on his own schedule, you know, doing it for free. He was jumped right on, went down, called the folks to help this individual. And you know, so the amount of work you folks do, you know, it's exciting to be able to hopefully be able to have our parade back in town. So kudos to you and your entire Veterans Council. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Councilor Ungar, seconded by Councilor Mangini. All those in favor? Opposed? 11 in favor, zero against. Good night, everyone. Great night. <laughs>